to us. They want to see us and see what kind of antics we were doing today. Other <laughs> people, what's been going? Yeah, we love it. We love you all for it. Yes, we're here for you. They should be seeing us live. I know if they don't see us, they'll be hitting you up, letting you know. I know, right? Because you know they're always commenting. This is not working. How come we're not seeing you guys? How come we're not hearing you? I want to hear you louder. Yes, yes. Great comment. So we get the good and the bad and everything from our listeners, which I know, right? Because you know they're always commenting. This is not working. How come we're not seeing you guys? How come we're not hearing you? I want to hear you louder. Yes, yes. Great comment. So we get the good and the bad and everything from our listeners, which I know, because right? you know, they're always commenting. This is not working. How come we're not seeing you guys? How come we're not hearing you? I want to hear you louder. Yes, yes, great comment. So we get the good and the bad and everything from our listeners, which I know, because right? you know, they're always commenting. All I'm hearing is the playback of everything I just said. Guys? How come we're not hearing you? I want to hear you louder. Are you yes. hearing that? Tell you, boy. This is a fun day. Let me tell you. <laughs> Does not have. So we're back to firing the DJ today, Miss Reese. No. <laughs> no. I'm wondering it, where am I hearing this keep going on? On the, I guess it's on the when you log on to the. Mm -hmm. site, you realize that I was logged on. To the mm -hmm. site. So, yeah, so we are fine. We're live in stream because we keep hearing ourselves. So Well, I don't see the video on, so I don't know if people are seeing us. It says it's on, and we kept hearing. Okay, I see it. I see it now. On. I see it now. Yes. All right, well, Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being here with us. It is another fabulous day, yes, and that's what we're going to say. It is another fabulous day. Yes. yes. Right, Reese? When, when we can afford it, we'll have professionals to do this. What um, do you mean? Like, we're not the professionals doing this? Oh, yes, we are. I beg to differ. Okay, then. All righty. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, natural. <laughs> oh, natural. <laughs> hey, you natural and natural today. You have to be like that, right? Sometimes, Sometimes you have to. And let me tell you something. Right now in this pandemic, everybody is all natural. I, so. Yes, this is good. one of them days. Yes, girl. It's not a big deal. Go for it. And before the show starts, I'm just putting I'm putting out my Christmas wish right now. I beg. I'm not like some people that want <laughs> to stush about the begging. <laughs> Wait, but some people, even when they beg, they still don't get what they beg for. And you know, like, hello. I gotta put it out there. <laughs> I gotta go there with Reese. I mean, <laughs> what y'all can do is buy me a headset. I need a headphones. Oh, wow. I tell y'all, two months. Fuck, listen, it's the seven, it's the 18th. Giving y'all months and that's all I have. Start saving those dollar, dollar bills. So if we have any amazing, generous donors out there in our listener land, right? Or um, any one of our amazing sponsors who would like to donate a nice headphone, you know what to do, call us or just send it on over or call us and let us know and we'll let you know where to send it, okay? We would appreciate you tremendously. <laughs> Did I put that nicely? <laughs> oh. Oh. Our, well, you know, I, I can never pronounce it, but our... Wow, what's affecting us today? Wow, what's affecting us? Wow. Let's talk about what we were talking about earlier today. I just wanted to turn up, turn up your volume just a little bit more because you sound a little low to me. 
Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Talking early this morning about raising kids nowadays as opposed to, you know, back into our days. Back in our oh. days. Yes. Yes. Revisit that conversation we had today. Raising kids today. You guys, I don't know. Punishment. More, what I really want to know is the, the way how we were disciplined back in the day compared to how the kids are disciplined now. Do you think old school discipline works on the new kid these days? That's what we want to know. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. We want to hear everybody's opinion about this. But in my opinion, the big fat answer to that is a no. That's a no. I remember when I was growing up and I was younger, you know, when I got punishment and I got me a whooping, <laughs> okay, if I was bad. So I would, no, and I was scared. And I would always be scared of getting that. So I, then I would try to do things to not get that. Because I would think about it every time, like, oh man, my mom is gonna kill me. However, the kids today, let me tell you, my kid today, that stuff doesn't work. These kids today, it doesn't work on them. It's like they now are so much more exposed to so many different things. Like back when we were growing up, we thought, oh, if we got a whooping or if we got, you know, if my mama whooped my butt, then it's the end of the world that's that's it you know we got so scared now they're like whatever yeah okay life goes on and then you can't do it too much anymore because they have so many resources now so you you end up doing that and it's like you get in trouble and all the other things that happen yeah <laughs> growing up i swear let me tell you when i got in trouble out of the three of us i was the most i gave trouble i own it right i did too but let me tell you when my mother when my mother like say you know you're in trouble you're gonna get a you know beaten or whatever man i start to fret yes me too and listen sometimes i think my mom made up stuff just to beat me <laughs> And like, okay, Pat not giving no trouble. Okay, cool. I swear she made up stuff just, <laughs> just, just to give you a beating no. up. Oh my goodness. That's sad. This belt. My daddy had this belt. Because, you know, back in the days, them um, leather big buckle belts, you know. That belt wore it down to the buckle. Oh no. The buckle. I'm telling my mama used that belt. Oh, I swear. I swear. No, I I didn't get I didn't get that, you know, because oh my goodness. Now they call all that. I, I think they call it what corporal punishment, right? I so but, but that not working on kids today because mm -mm, it doesn't work. I my sister, oh my older sister was a genius. So she I used to get all the whoopings, right? Cause my big sister would cry. And if my mom just lift her finger at her and said, uh, 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 she starts crying and, <laughs> and all of that. And I'll never forget this. We were in trouble so much one night because I was the little sister. My said, we went to bed. My mom said, okay, I know how to get you guys. <laughs> we went to bed <laughs> and my sister put me the little dummy on top of her. <laughs> So I got the licks. <laughs> I never forget. I got the licks. <laughs> but you know, as the younger sister, you know how you kind of like you adore the older ones and you do everything they tell you. My sister never adored me at all. No. Uh, <laughs> even though I didn't really listen, because I I was the bad one. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I was the bad one, and she used to tattletale on me every day so i got whoopings every day she went into one ear and came out the next like <laughs> like serious now that i look back at it i'm like i didn't i deserve those whoopings but 
man, I'm telling but you. But think about that, Reese. If it didn't work on you because you were getting it every day, then how much more so is it not going to work today, right? It's yeah. Not, it's not. I, 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 I just don't know about these kids. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't know. Like some, my punishment, I, I don't know, change the Wi-Fi thing because, you know, they hook to the phones take away oh my goodness yes what else do you do what else and when that doesn't work i have a little genius of a kid right i hope she's not listening right now that little kid okay so i'm gonna whisper right you know what she does oh so i take away her games and this and that but she finds other ways to do to play her games just the same and i'm thinking oh okay and then now that they're doing the online school oh they are so slick they're so slick when it's supposed to be time for school oh there's another tab working in the background somewhere okay and other things happening but does the school allow them to go on these websites no not some sites no not not all sites they can they can do that these kids is extra work extra okay you know what we should do a show one day raising today's kids yes so if you already have a full-time job uh welcome because this is another full-time job now with the online learning and everything and the kids being at home all the time 24 7 on top of everything else that you're doing so what i did as of last week i want to tell you this real quick so as of last week i was talking to um some friends of mine and um a husband and wife and we were talking because they have three boys so i was talking to my friends and i said you know what uh, this punishment thing, it just, it's not working. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not working. It's like water off their backs, right? So we decided together because her husband used to do his punishment when he was growing up was like calisthenics. So he said, I bet you that will work. Try that on them. So what this is, is you, they stand against the wall, right? and you have them bend down almost to like a sitting chair position against the wall. They should be in a chair like stance. So against the wall and they bend low enough where you should be able to sit on their lap like, you know, as if it's a chair. So they bend and they hold that position, arms out in front of them, right? And you can put a, a, a let them hold their homework book or something in their hand or maybe not but just have their hands out with that and say, okay, hold that position for about 10 minutes and watch them squirm. And it's not beating them or hitting them or nothing like that. It's exercise, right? But you let them do that. And every time, and it works because it deters them because they know they don't want to exercise. They don't want to do any of that stuff. So if they have to do that and you say, oh, okay, hold that position, you know, they're not, in any kind of, um, how would you say, you're not beating them or it, it hurts, but just the muscles, cause it's exercise. Okay, so you get a two for one. This is your gym class right now. Let's see if you're gonna do this every single day. Let's see how that works. And it works. Man, well, anybody out there who have any ideas? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, um. We should, as I said, we should have a, a topic one Wednesday, raising today's kids, have parents call in, share their views, share what they're part of, how they manage, how they manage their, their kids. Because we need it. We need help. We need uh, help. These kids are, are smart and they're trying every other thing, every single day, everything. And every day you have to change it. Who has time to keep up with them? But that's what they're counting on. <laughs> So today's topic, I'm excited about today's topic. You want to lead us in there? Into so today's topic, um, today we're discussing, I don't know if we have any of our guests on as yet, yes, but we, we do. But today's topic that we're going to go into, and I'm so excited about this, we're going to be talking about postpartum depression, right? And it's an amazing topic. And every, as you all know, our wonderful listeners, every week we talk about issues that matter, 
to both women and men. It doesn't matter. But we want to bring you education and we want to bring you informative content so that you can leave here learning something new, understanding what we're talking about, and hopefully we can help you. Okay, so with that said, today we're talking about postpartum depression. And we have two amazing guests who are joining us today, and we're so excited to have you. We have Bertie Meyer, and I don't want, I hope I said your name right, Bertie. And we have Leslie, and I will allow you both um, in a minute to introduce yourselves, tell us who you are, and the, the amazing work that you're doing. So perhaps we're going to start today with Bertie. Hi, Bertie. Welcome to our show at Let's Connect Here. Hi, thanks for having me. So yes. I am a nurse and a therapist, and um, I'm also certified in perinatal mental health, and I worked at a hospital system where I started a perinatal uh, mood disorder program in 1997 and ran that program for over 25 years. So um, pretty proud of that. And I retired from the hospital. Um, which is Indiana University Health in Indianapolis, Indiana, and statewide. And um, I've also been working with Postpartum Support International since 2000 and volunteering with them. And um, I continue to work and volunteer through PSI, which is where you're going to find all the information that you need about perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. So I'm happy to be here to talk about this subject. Excellent. And we're so happy to have you. And this is why I wanted you to, to just give us a quick intro to, to yourself, because I know that you are a renowned speaker on the subject. And um, you've been doing this for a very long time. So everybody who's listening to us, and we know how our listeners, you all like to comment and to send us questions, know that we have two experts today who are going to talk to you about everything. This is not just our opinions, okay? <laughs> Even though we can give it in abundance. <laughs> All right, now, <laughs> um, we just want to learn, and with that, I'm going to, if, if you ladies don't mind, I'll jump back and forth since we're doing introductions. Um, Leslie, if you could also introduce yourself so we can then jump into the meat of what we're going to chat about today. Sure. Well, I am so happy to be included in this Um I have attended some of Birdie's trainings actually. So whenever I saw that she was going to be involved in this, I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, yes. So that was such uh, a coincidence. I yes. promise you it was not planned. <laughs> yes. So um, my name is Leslie Terry O'Harold. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I am also a perinatal mental health specialist. Um, so through PSI, that's the uh, trainings that you take to become uh, certified in perinatal mental health. So that's how I first learned of Birdie and her amazing work. But I am in South Alabama right now. I have a private practice where I only treat women who are either um, prenatal, postpartum, or during their pregnancy. I also have clients who are... Um, planning adoptions, who are going through infertility, lots of pregnancy loss as well. But I had over 10 years in the hospital setting back in Lafayette, Louisiana. So all I've ever done since 2005 is work with this population, which is very near and dear to my heart. So I'm so happy to be here as well to discuss such an important topic, especially in 2020. Right. Excellent. Exactly. Especially in 2020. Especially my, in 2020. Um, and I do want to dig into that in a little bit. Um, that's something that we always chat about right now. Um, so Bertie, with that said, if you could, um, what we like to do here on the show is imagine that all of our listeners know nothing, absolutely nothing about postpartum depression. So, and we do know that a, a lot of folks um, may be aware, some may not be aware, but we may have family members as well who may be affected and we don't know what the signs are. So if you could walk us through this, take it from the very elementary steps um, to just tell them what is postpartum depression and then we can take it from there. Sure, get ready. This is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome. I train. I train all over the world. So this is what I do. This I can Excellent. do so sleep. Um, 
Okay, look, so let's start. Baby blues. Okay. Lasts for two weeks. That's the biggest misunderstanding. Baby blues, 80% of women um, have the baby blues. I say 100% of women probably get the baby blues, but the studies say 80%, 50 to 80%. That's where you cry easily. You're adjusting to motherhood. It does not last two, past two weeks. So I'll have women come in and say, I thought I just had the baby blues and it would go away anytime, but they're coming in to see me at six months. If we can get the word out, baby blues only last two weeks and they're normal. But what happens is you say the word postpartum depression and most people first thoughts are, I wanna harm my baby. That means I wanna harm my baby or it means someone just sitting around crying all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we really miss what it really is because we don't know what it looks like. So I'll do a right. quick overview of what it looks like and the misunderstanding. When we say the term postpartum depression, it means it's only in the postpartum period and it's only depression. So then what happens when I wake up and I don't have depression, I'm extremely anxious, jumping out of my skin. You didn't tell me to watch for that. When you leave from the hospital, many times they'll just say, if you find yourself crying a lot, be sure and call your doctor. Well, I'm not crying. I'm mean as the snake. I'm yelling <laughs> at my toddler. I'm yelling at my spouse. What's that? That's also a perinatal mood disorder. Oh. So like the umbrella term, perinatal, meaning anytime in pregnancy, anytime in the first year postpartum, mood and anxiety disorders. But if I say perinatal mood and anxiety disorders to most people, they say, huh, what's that? So I go ahead and use the term postpartum depression because that's the term everybody knows. But what we need to get out there is it's also anxiety. So we know it is depression crying, sadness, overeating, oversleeping, but it can also be anxiety. And those two things can go together. But some, many times what we see, and I'm sure Leslie does too, the most common presenting factor is anxiety, worry, 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 can't eat, can't sleep, can't fall asleep, can't stay asleep, can't go back to sleep, mind going all the time, could go into a full-blown panic attack. So these women you see are losing 20, 30 pounds in two to three weeks and everybody's like, oh, look, she got her figure back. Nope, she's probably got anxiety. Oh. So yeah, you see those two go together. Um, oh. Also, just as a new mom, you can't figure out how to eat. When we were pregnant, remember, when we were pregnant for the first time, we really didn't have a clue how much our life was about to change. And it's a shock. Yeah. It's totally yeah. a shock. Nobody expected that. And so they say things like, I'm so overwhelmed. I had no idea it was going to be this hard. I don't know how to figure out when to eat. I don't know how to figure out when to sleep, when the baby sleeps. What's that mean? So depression, anxiety it can also be OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. So when I say you're so OCD, everybody kind of knows what that means. That means you like things clean and neat and you're maybe a germaphobe. And so cleaning, checking and rechecking, things have to be in a certain order. Um, I, can, I can't let you help me with laundry because you don't fold the towels right. Um, you don't vacuum right. I mean, there's lots of things we self-sabotage. So that's kind of the OCD, the checking and rechecking and ordering and cleaning and that kind of thing. Also OCD can be what we call intrusive thoughts. And intrusive thoughts are the most misunderstood of every diagnosis. So intrusive thoughts is the what if gone crazy thoughts. So remember when you're a new mom, you, um, you suddenly start the, or a new parent, you start thinking, what if this happens? What if I drop the baby? What if, what if, what if? Well, there's a place here in your brain that wants to protect your baby. It's taken and twisted and said, what's the worst that could happen? And then these parents, both men and women, have these what we call intrusive thoughts of actually seeing that horrible thought like an image in their head, like a movie playing, or a story that goes on and on and on. So I give the example of if you don't understand what an intrusive thought is, I'll give you one. You're driving down the highway. You're behind one of those trucks with the cars chained up on it. Mm -hmm. You got it? What's mm -hmm. going to happen? The All car is... <laughs> Come on. I'm going to let you talk. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. So are you telling me, Birdie, that today I still have, what is it, 
postpartum depression right now because I think about that every day. <laughs> no, I those are actually, <laughs> those are intrusive thoughts and we all have them. The problem is when they become <laughs> about the baby and they're like, let's say, what if I drop the baby? That's right. a thought that we all have. Someone who has intrusive thoughts sees their baby maybe oh. flying down the oh. stairs or they might even okay. see themselves harming their baby. And there okay. are triggers. There are common triggers like heights, um, water, mm -hmm. um, being in traffic, maybe sharp objects. So there's certain things that they're just doing normal things and then they have this thought of, <gasps> And then they say, oh my gosh, why am I having that? And they think they have psychosis or they're going crazy when in fact they're really common, but we don't talk about it. One of our colleagues in the field wrote a book called Dropping the Baby and Other Scary Thoughts. And there's also yeah. another book called Good Moms Have Scary Thoughts. So to understand, um, I, I don't suggest reading it when you're in the midst of intrusive thoughts, but later to help understand. So we talked about depression, anxiety, OCD, OCD intrusive thoughts, and now I'm going to mention PTSD. And that is when something happens at your delivery that either baby's life was in danger, your life was in danger, or both. So you did not, you do not have the beautiful delivery that you believed you were going to have. And in fact, it was a very scary delivery. You could have almost died. Baby could have almost died. You're rushed down the hallway for emergent C-section. You had a postpartum hemorrhage. You got preeclampsia. Sometimes things happen that they even end up with a hysterectomy. Baby gets rushed to NICU. Baby's got an anomaly. Baby, anything, all of these things that can happen that women then have anxiety attacks with flashbacks about that delivery. And then that is... These are, when I talk about perinatal mood and anxiety disorders, that can affect one in five to seven women. There's different numbers for a PTSD in childbirth, but the depression and the anxiety, that's one in five to seven women. And then we have lower incidence, but don't forget it still happens. One to two women in a thousand get psychosis. And that is out of touch with reality hearing things that aren't really there, seeing things that aren't really there. And that's a medical emergency and they need to be hospitalized. Also need to be hospitalized for suicidal thoughts because those also can occur with your depression, your anxiety, any of those. And so bipolar disorder, we wanna put in here too because they could have already had it and that really ramps up during pregnancy and postpartum um, or it can be diagnosed for the first time postpartum. We have these things any time in our life, but they ramp up and look different when we're pregnant and postpartum because it now involves a fragile human being, basically. So we all got something. You all need to know your diagnosis. We all have something. I always ask right. what I teach. I always say, raise your hand real high if you're normal or you come from a normal family. And nobody raises their hand. Nope. Because none of us are absolutely normal. <laughs> I can tell you that. I will raise my hand to say I am not normal because right. I have a 12-year-old daughter and I still drive going, oh my goodness, that thing is going to fall on us. And oh, my kid, oh, I can't have her ride on that side of the car because this might happen. Nope. So she sits in the middle. So I think I'm still going through post -trial. No, just, <laughs> that's just your diagnosis and you get to have it for the rest of your life. You just learn to be the best you can be with what you got. We all got something. <laughs> so true. Reese, you had a question? Can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> um, when my, I have four kids and my second one, I remember he was fed, clean, everything. And he just kept crying, kept crying. And there was a time, I mean, when he was crying, I felt like I wanted to just take him and just throw him against the wall. I never felt like that before. Yeah. And my cousin was like, oh, no, 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 no. You need to. She took you need a break. break. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I, I never, f I feel so, up to this day, I still remember it. Like, mm -hmm. that was the only time I went through that out of my four kids. I'll never forget that instant. Like, you're clean. You're fed. 
everything. Why are you crying? You know, and I'm like, oh my, I don't know if it's guilt why I still remember, you know. Why. Sure, it is. It is because you just think, how could I have had that thought about my sweet baby? But we're all the same. The temperament of a baby is one of the risk factors is, you know, you get first, you're like, oh, poor thing, you little sweet thing, you're crying. And then they keep crying and keep crying and keep crying. Yeah. Then you're like, what do you want? I realize that it is, you're not making this stuff up just to get out, you know, it, it, it's real. Yeah. Yeah, and irritability and anger is part of it, but just you're sleep deprived, that baby keeps crying, and you feel in a way kind of rejected. And I used to do claims, like disability claims. Yeah. And the pregnant, when they were supposed to go back to work, couldn't go back to work because the diagnosis was postpartum. And a lot of people were like, oh, that's not a real, that's not real, you know, but it is. That's when I realized that, no, this thing is really serious. Well, I know. I have filled out plenty of those disability claims in my time. I'd rather. Yeah, it's really they're They're tough. But what some women really do need the time off. Not everybody, but some really are suffering from it in ways that they really couldn't function at work. Can't think straight. Or let's talk about irritability and anger. One woman said, I'd get fired if I go back because I, I can't quit raging. They call it rage. Oh, that before the baby not not uh, not all of them doesn't mean they had it before no, no, i'm saying if you were irritable and like that before having a baby now you have the baby you're worse can you imagine you can't go to work uh-uh that's true no some people do right. have just pms before periods irritable and moody they're going to be at higher risk of having that rage and moodiness afterwards so with that to piggyback off that um, is there um, insurance benefits to that? Does the insurance recognize this and cover women who are experiencing this and at what phase? Do you, do you ladies know? Because this, this seems like it's a viable medical issue. Um, I'm not sure if you all are familiar with that. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out Leslie, there. Leslie, are you... Are you in private oh, practice? I am. I am. Yeah. Are you, do you mean for just for services, for medical benefits and therapy services? Or are you talking right. about specifically like time off and short-term disability? So I'm perhaps I'm talking about all of that. So let's say for what we're talking about right now and what Reese was just mentioning, she's feeling a certain way or perhaps even before the, the, the birth and then after and you're experiencing that rage or something. You know, is there, does your insurance recognize that as postpartum depression? And if they want to come to you, Leslie, for some counseling service or something, does the insurance company recognize that and provide coverage? Yes. So for insurance, how long? just like any other mental health issue, um, it can usually be coded as an adjustment disorder because they're adjusting to motherhood, they're adjusting to parenthood and having some difficulty with that. So either an adjustment disorder with anxiety, an adjustment disorder with depression, or an adjustment disorder with the mixed anxiety and depression. There are other codes for postpartum depression, but none that I have found specifically on the insurance panels that I'm credentialed with, but I know that there are. So I usually start off with an adjustment disorder and it is covered by most, most major insurance companies. So in short-term disability, the same way I've helped, just like Bertie said, I have had clients that have needed a little bit more time at home to be able to recover either emotionally, physically, all of the above from a difficult delivery or an NICU admission for their baby or severe postpartum anxiety. And I have found um, at least in the scenarios that I've worked with, that they have been very accommodating as far as giving these moms time off. It's not as good as it could be. That is surely sh very sure of that. Um, right. Maternity leave is not nearly as long as it should be. And women should yeah. have to be filling out short-term disability paperwork just to be able to have three months at home with their baby whenever that's still you're still in the fourth trimester at that point. You don't, right. many women are not necessarily ready to go back to work. Some women are. Um, but I loved how Bertie mentioned the fact that postpartum anxiety 
is more com the more common manifestation of PPD, at least in what I see as well in my, pri my private practice. 99.9% .9 of the women that come to see me are not coming to see me because of symptoms of depression in the postpartum period. They're coming to see me because they are screaming at their toddlers, like Birdie said, they're irritable, 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 overwhelmed, having scary intrusive thoughts, but they're not depressed, at least not yet. Maybe they would be yeah, later on, depressed. depending, they get yeah. depressed later on. So it depends on what time, the time period yeah. in which they're actually reaching out for help. But one other interesting aspect of um, the anxiety component to this is that there seems to be, at least in my experience, a high risk factor for women who are um, uh, go-getters, uh, type A personality. Perfectionist. Use, perfectionist. Really? Used to getting it done. Because yes, they've been competent. They've been on top of things. They're the ones that people come to for help. They're the ones who fix things. And they have this baby and they feel absolutely out of control. They feel completely incompetent. So what does that say to them? Whenever their whole lives, maybe, or at least their adult lives, they've been able to handle everything. So they come to me and they say, how come I can't handle this? I've been able to handle all of these other awful things that have happened in my life, or I've always been the one to be in charge and in control, and I can't handle this. And it's my house has always looked good. Yes, right? that too. That too. My house has always looked clean. I've always been just, you know, and I, I say all of this with love to them because I'm like, I am in that category and I was in that category and I get it. You bring this baby home and you feel like, I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's I, you know, Oh my goodness. It's, I'm listening to you ladies right now. And I'm thinking, was that a no? And I'm being very serious. I'm putting my business out there right now for everybody <laughs> y'all. <laughs> it's like, I really didn't think about it, but I have to be honest. My my husband had said to me, he said, I think you're going through post postpartum depression. And I was always so annoyed. I was like, no, I'm not. I am fine. But, mm -hmm. you know, I was always um, in charge and I've been, you know, called a perfectionist as well. And in all, I, I worked in health insurance my entire life also in a senior capacity for many years. So then... I was accustomed to leading and to doing this. And then I had this child, one who refused to be breastfed. Okay. Just absolutely like she hated me. And then could not, I, I, could, I didn't get not an ounce, not an, even an hour of sleep per night. She would stay up the entire night during the day. She wanted nothing to do with me though, but I couldn't sleep because then I had to do all the stuff. Everybody's calling da, da, da. everybody's awake during the day. And I went through so much, <laughs> you know, so it was so difficult for me, but I didn't do anything about it. So what do you do? What, what do women do? Do you have women, Leslie, that come to you later on? Is there some sort of a oh, time yeah. limit and how do you help them? I, I have had women who have most likely had untreated, undiagnosed postpartum anxiety and depression who come to me with their children are toddler age. Mm -hmm. And again, they're back at work. They're trying to balance all of this. And they're in the mornings, where's your shoes? Where's your book sack? You know, do, are you wearing underwear today? You know, trying to get their kids ready and out the door and feeling like they're about to crawl out of their skin, like feeling very elevated in that. So definitely anxiety and depression symptoms. I mean, they can continue. Um, the onset though is going to be in that, that perinatal period, either during pregnancy or postpartum. But absolutely, I have had women who have older children who are experiencing, or maybe after multiple children. So they've had a little bit of um, postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety after their first baby, and maybe a little bit worse after the second. And then the third baby, it's, you know. Let me ask you this. Um, do you find it the postpartum more in single parents? single mothers as opposed to married couples or it does i mean have you guys seen oh absolutely um Reese. um 
when and we haven't even talked about how why do we get this okay because that's something yes, you want to cover as well. who gets it and why is this all about hormones no it's not so there are several risk factors who gets a perinatal mood disorder those who have a lot of risk factors and again you don't have a choice about risk factors but being a single parent is absolutely higher risk studies show it um, you, I mean, it's, it's common sense, but studies prove that non-partnered parents are doing it all alone. Yeah. They might have mom or grandma to help, but they might not. And they're having to work outside the home, pay for daycare, and they don't get to come home and say, I have a partner to give me a break. And they, they don't. Job, and they coming home to the second job. You- that's right. You start your second shift the second you yeah. walk. That's that's the answer for everybody, even if they do have a partner. But yeah. it's way different when you're starting second shift without anybody helping you. Yeah. So yeah. no, that is one of the risk factors. So you want to go over risk factors, you guys? Yes, please. Who Thank you. It, who gets it and why? Number yes. one risk factor: having a personal or family history of any of the things that I talked about earlier, depression, anxiety, OCD, intrusive thoughts, um, PTSD, bipolar disorder, psychosis, eating disorder, alcoholism, drug addiction, suicide. So all these things you think about your own risk factors, that's the number one. And then we'll just start naming them. Um, Mm -hmm. Temperament of baby. Um, Mother issues, that's always a big one. That means your mom may have passed away. Your mom might be in another country. She might have abandoned you, neglected you, abused you. You haven't spoken in three years. When we have a baby, we want our mama to nurture us. And if that relationship is messed up in some way, um, that's just huge. Um, Thyroid, Um, your thyroid disease can cause, can increase your risk. Diabetes increases your risk. Um, Think about an unplanned, unwanted pregnancy. Um, History of any abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, current even domestic violence. But sexual abuse, one in three to four women have been sexually abused. So you think about how that plays out when you have a baby or even add to that a traumatic birth on top of that. You've got a lot of trauma going on. History of infertility, fertility medications, um, PMS. Um, Throw some out, Leslie. What am I forgetting? Um, A history of um, mood swings in puberty as well. Uh, Reactions to birth control pills, showing that you have that tendency to have your brain chemistry affected by changes in hormones. Really? Yeah, I had all kinds of risk factors and I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even know it. That's how a lot of people are, don't you? Yes, think? yes. In fact, when I do an intake, when I'm all done with the intake, I have a piece of paper that I have all the risk factors lit, written on. And I just say like this, I start to educate. One in five to seven women get this. This is very common. That's the first shock. Really? It's that common? Yeah. Secondly, look at all the risk factors you have. And I just go down the sheet and I say, you have this, you have this, you have this, you have this. And then they go, oh, I had no idea I had that many. Um, and it's shocking. Baby went to NICU. Of course you're anxious. You've had a miscarriage last time. Of course you're anxious. So that's also previous losses. Um, sick baby, um, baby with health problems. I mean, all of it. You just imagine all those things heap up on top of each other and you're like, bingo, you get to have a natal mood disorder. All this time, I thought postpartum was just chemical imbalance. See, that's what everybody thinks. It's about your yeah. No, the hormone drop, which yeah. when you're pregnant, estrogen and progesterone go up as high as they're ever going to go and then they crash down. That causes baby blues. But that only lasts two weeks until you whatever. Another thing, when you, um, if you discontinue breastfeeding abruptly, that'll cause a crash in hormones. That's a big one. That's a big one. Wow. People suddenly 
even so having can you trouble. can you expound on that a little bit more for all of you our listeners out there who are listening to this right now so if you're stopping your breastfeeding suddenly or short perhaps for you have to go back to work or whatever you know maybe this is a good reason for you to continue or make arrangements with your job so you can find some time to pump or something so you're continuing to do this I didn't know that. That's interesting. So if you could talk about that a little bit for me. Sure. I'm also a lactation counselor, so I get to be an OB know-it-all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, when you are when you deliver and your hormones crash, but up come oxytocin and prolactin, which brings in your love hormone and brings in your milk. And so you're breastfeeding, it kind of, you know, when babies get a milk drunk, mom also gets a milk drunk after breastfeeding, you know, that baby really? just about milk drunk. Mom feels real relaxed and whatever. But if she suddenly says, well, I want to stop now. And she decides to just stop and she stops. Don't ever stop cold turkey. Please wean over a two to three week period. And you still might notice a change in your mood so it'll even out hmm. but just to know that when because you're dropping now more hormones again also and you may have had this carol when you're having trouble breastfeeding that's also a risk factor because you really wanted to breastfeed yes it's a grief and loss of dang it yes I really wanted to breastfeed and it didn't work I felt dejected by my own yeah. baby and the nurses and everybody in the hospital, they tried so hard and she absolutely refused. And then at the time, my husband was like, well, you're not trying hard enough. You should try harder. I felt so horrible. And right. then I come home with this child who would not sleep. I just, oh, I didn't get a break. Yeah. I remember one woman said to me, Carol, that she had, she said, you know what? I birthed the vampire. This baby stays up all night long and sleeps all day. Yes, I started having so much stress. I thought like I was seeing like fire. Every time I closed my eyelids or so fire was dancing on my eyelids. I didn't know what was happening. It was, I was stressed. Poor thing. You know, and I wanted a child to, to, to breastfeed, you know, and it just, she just refused. Like every time she looked at me, it's like she hated me. That's what it feels like, the rejection. Yeah. We, we really want to, of course, place the emphasis on breastfeeding, but we have to also remember uh, some women don't want to, and other women really want to, and it doesn't work. Like baby's got a tongue tie, lip tie, and until you get that repaired, uh, you're going to have cracked bleeding nipples uh, or um, My- you have tra- traumatic delivery. You may not have enough milk. Um, there's all kinds of thyroid issues. There's different reasons why women don't even get enough milk supply or that baby won't latch. So we have this picture that it's everybody just, it comes natural and it's going to be easy and it's not. And then that's another grief and loss. There's lots of grief and loss around having a baby, grief and loss of your old life, grief and loss of the things that didn't go well. I mean, you don't think about that, but grief and loss. I mean, overnight, you lost all your freedom. You don't get to come and go as you please anymore without a diaper bag and your car seat, yes. getting them all hooked in. And then they poop all the way to the back of their neck once you get them all set up in the yes. seat, right? <laughs> you don't carry a purse anymore. You throw your wallet in your diaper bag. You lose yes. all your freedom, all control of your schedule. Your schedule's that baby's schedule. And like Leslie said earlier, you don't have a clue what you're doing. You feel incompetent. The first one. So Leslie, are you like also now sort of, so it's it's even more than, ju- it's like therapy. I can't even get the words out right now because I'm listening to you ladies and I'm so emotional right now. I'm about to oh. cry. So yeah. it's. So it's like you're doing like grief counseling and everything on top of everything else that you're doing, correct? Well, well, especially for this year, because right now our 2020 babies, our pandemic babies are not, um, moms aren't feeling like they can go and do things with them like they might have before. So all the things that we recommend connecting, you know, going to mommy and me classes or going to the library or um, going meet a friend for a cup of coffee, those aren't necessarily as easy for moms to do right now because of the fear of COVID. And whenever you add in as well, that those first few months are already so isolating whenever you're home with a new baby, 
these moms are isolated on top of isolation. So they've got all these layers of this. And I find that the moms that I'm seeing, and not to mention the corona fatigue, you know, of doing this for so many months now, and their babies are now not really uh, um, as comfortable with other people because they're not as used right. to seeing other unfamiliar faces and, you know, and, and, and other people and experiences. But so, yeah, so expectations too, I find if, and I see this a lot with moms who um, go through infertility or take fertility drugs to be able to get pregnant, this long awaited, long wanted, long paid for baby that all of a sudden, if it's not sunshine and rainbows right afterwards, if their expectations are up here, all these expectations um, that can lead to grief because the experience is not necessarily going to be exactly as you expected it to be. So that's another grief and loss aspect as well with therapy. And then not to mention if you have a traumatic delivery or an NICU experience, again, a lot of women do not necessarily give themselves a permission to grieve their birth experience. They think that they should just be happy and grateful that they and their baby made out, made out okay. But I also talk to them about grieving the loss of that birth experience that they had wanted. So those are expectations as well that come into play that leads to grief and loss as well in the therapeutic set, setting. So yes, for sure. Lots yeah. of in this time right now, during COVID, I, women are telling me that their spouses, partners are not even allowed to go to their prenatal visits with them. And they're allowed one person at delivery, which means if you dreamed of having a photographer and a doula, a doula yes, your mother and your spouse, you don't get that. So see, they're really grieving. Uh, let me just tell you a, for instance, Postpartum Support International does online support groups. And we do them in many different categories, grief and loss, um, birth mothers, dads, pregnant NICU. women, NICU, um, I don't know what all I said, but we have lots of them. And mm -hmm. before the pandemic, we had like four to five groups a week. Now we have over 20. And I think we're up to like 22 or 23. Every single group is packed to the gills with a waiting list. And we just keep adding more because it's not enough. Other people are doing online support groups too, but COVID comes up at every group I do. I do two groups a week myself and um, COVID comes up at every single one and how it has changed their life and how it's just isolating, like Leslie said. Right. And we'd be remiss not to say this. This came in while Leslie was talking into my head. Let's not forget that Black women actually experience, it's one in three yes. for Black women. Oh. Just being one in three because of um, inequalities um, in healthcare, higher um, mortality rate in Black infants, higher mortality rate in Black mamas. It's just a fact and many, many reasons for all of that. But um we have I'm to so know. glad you touched on that because that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask you because we have so many other issues like you talked about before diabetes this and that that's really a lot higher in the black and brown communities than right. in other communities so I wanted to ask about this as well um, and we have all different listeners from all across different states so I wanted to definitely, you know, talk to them about this issue. And if you're experiencing something, please take the time to go in, seek some counseling, seek, seek help. And, you know, a lot of times in the black and brown communities, there's stigma attached to yep. everything. Yes. Yep. So I want to chat about that a little bit with you ladies to see what are some of the stigmas that are associated and especially with black and brown people. And I know we have every community in, in this radio show because we don't single anyone out. But what are some of the stigmas that are attached? Um, mm. I would imagine that you don't want people to feel like you hate your child or this and that. So you're hiding it. But I would imagine that that is definitely not the way to go. So if you would address some of that for me. Let's just say what comes to mind first of all number one is um not having trust in the medical community because as you know with your generational you have generational trauma our black and brown communities especially um black communities were um 
used in medical experiments, used as wet nurses. There's lots of that kind of distrust of the medical community. And we even have studies to show that that someone who, let's say, who's black, seeing a white OB care provider doesn't get the care that, so, that they would when they see a black care provider. Not being right. listened to, um, believing yeah. that black people don't have as much pain. These are beliefs from years and years. And right. so distrust, but also maybe even, and listen to me, I'm not an expert. I've learned this from other people. Um, and the studies, and I've gotten lots of education in this, and I'm constantly working on knowing more and more, because we have to, to work in this community, um, in this OB community, that um, honestly, just like I said, the distrust, but also, um, I just lost my train of thought. I love when I do that. Where was I going, Leslie? Were you going towards DCFS involvement, child protection reports and things like that? I've had That's that come true. up as being um, something that 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 women um, in the African-American and in the, the minority groups will hesitate coming forward for fear that they're going to be reported. Yes, I would going imagine to be reported. so. And, and I'm always, I, I'm always, always so sure to let all of my clients know that you can be a good mother and have postpartum anxiety. You can take good care of your children and still have scary thoughts about being a mother or taking care of them or about your baby, your, your babies themselves. And so I'm always very careful and cognizant of that fact that they're coming to me with things that they may not have felt comfortable with saying to anyone else whether it's another provider or a family member or a spouse or a partner or a sister. And um, so it's important for them to know there is no shame in coming, at, in coming forward. And the more we're able to educate other providers on this so that they know too, this is not something that's reportable. This is not something that makes somebody a bad mother. This is not somebody that, something that means that they cannot take good care of their children if they're having these symptoms. So that's taking away that stigma of course, of um, seeking mental health, seeking mental health um, services in the first place. But I have found that to be something as well, that I will have clients, um, African-American clients who will ask me if this is something that need, that would be reported. It's like, no, no, absolutely not. And it makes them even braver for coming forward and talking about this whenever it's something that they're so, they're so concerned about. And you know, you touched on the point, but I'm sorry, Reese, to cut you, but please don't forget your thought. I just want to touch on a point that um, Leslie and um, I'm not sure if it was Birdie made, but in terms of um, that fear uh, or fear, I forget the point really, but I'm thinking of Serena Williams. And this was a okay. comment, by, by the way, that one of our listeners just made um, to talk about, they mentioned Serena Williams. Mm -hmm. And if she hadn't been aggressive, to come out and push and advocate for herself. So there is something there. And I'm so glad that even though the climate we're in right now is very difficult, I am yep. glad that it's opening up a little bit more yes. discussion. And so we can talk more honestly now about what the black and brown communities are definitely experiencing, where it's like, oh, okay, you can withstand the pain or you know, some of your issues go, our issues go, um, it's it's ignored or maybe not listened to as much and that's right. the reason no. for the mistrust yeah you know the facts it's the facts and that's exactly right and right behind the black and brown communities is indigenous population yes. um, where i was going earlier that it did come back to me is religious views that you just need to pray more that right. you yes. have more faith um and you know, let's just, and there is that shame. There's shame in almost every community. It just, studies have shown it is higher and you have to, in the black community, and you really have to be, I always say, you, you must have been living under a rock if you've missed. You cannot ignore anymore how high the maternal mortality rate is in the black communities and right yes. behind that again, the indigenous communities. Yeah. So, um, and religious views in, 
in both of those communities come into play, but really in everyone's. I have clients who, women who come to me and they say this and it makes me giggle. They say, Bertie, I'm just not a medication kind of person. Okay, who is? Who is a medication kind of person? I don't want to take blood pressure medicine, but you right. know what? I don't want to have a stroke, so I'm going to take it. So we don't argue about taking blood pressure medicine, or if I tell you you're diabetic, you're not going to argue. But if I say you need an antidepressant, I think that really, oh no, mm -mm. I'm going to buck up. I'll take care of this on my own. Why do we act like our head's not attached to our body? Right. But right. that oh, that's stigma a good point. and shame, we will treat our physical ailments, but we won't treat our emotional ailments because somehow there's shame Stigma. There's stigma, but we all, we just have to keep talking about it and being open and saying, yes, I had postpartum depression. I took an antidepressant. There is no shame in that, but you get shame from all around. Your family yeah. might say, you don't do that. We're just going to pray more. Or even your OB may say, don't go on something. Or your psychiatrist may tell you not to go on something. You just never know. Reese, you had a question, right? I have a friend who's a therapist and she's I was going back to the point where he says um African Americans don't go to um Caucasian therapists. They rather feel they think that according to what she was telling me that most of her clients say that they don't know what we go through. So how are they gonna give us counseling and they don't right. know what we went through? So they rather go to an African American you know we're in a you know we're in a struggle we know where we're coming from you know right and even even so they still don't go to counseling but at the stigma they're gonna say i'm not gonna do my business what they're gonna do for me right mm -hmm. so i can understand i go to yeah. counseling I, I, I don't talk i'm a person that don't talk and my mom is like you need to talk but my thing is, I need to talk to somebody that don't know me from Jack. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I, if I talk to, let's say, Carol, in my head, I'm like, Carol know my business. And she can, you know, but with a therapist, they can't tell. Exactly. So, I mean, it is. And I'm not ashamed to say, I go to counseling. But boy, do I have things that's in me that I don't. And my mom well, how do you handle that, Leslie, when you have someone who comes in for, for counseling, et cetera, but you know that there's a wall or something, or you know, especially if it's someone from the black and brown community, you know, they're looking at you like, I don't trust her. She doesn't know anything about me. So why am I even here? How do you deal with that? <laughs> so it's, it's just, it's very honest and open from, from the get go. I ask them tell me about your culture. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your family rules. Tell me about all the things that you have learned from family members, from, um, from just your own experiences. And I think that that's a good thing about being a competent and a compassionate therapist in and of itself. They're going to know that I care. They're going to know just sitting with me and me talking about such intimate parts of their lives that if it's something that I don't understand, they can talk to me about, but I don't have to understand everything about what they've gone through to be able to help them in that moment. And I think that whenever you are able to engage in that way, it, it'll come up as they start to trust me more and more. That's not something that I expect that right away, they're going to let me into all of those parts of themselves that they are ashamed of or all the parts of themselves that give them um, so much joy and peace and, and security. So it, um, it's a relationship that builds over time. And that's why therapy works because it's that relationship that you're building and that, that ability to engage regardless of, of background and ethnicity. Trust, yeah, and right? We, we, yeah, exactly. Trust. Yes, exactly. Trust. And we are getting more audience comments where they're also saying, you know, um, additionally, when you're from the black or brown community, you tend, there is another stigma to that where you tend to feel like, listen, you know, I'm strong, I can deal with this, or because I, of that shame, 
You yes. know, there's a shame where it's like, you can't tell anybody because we're black and we're supposed to be strong and we're supposed to be tough. We're not like those other people who, you know, they, they, they need the therapy. So it's that stigma. Right. But I want to remind everyone, if you have an issue, like Reese said, there is no shame in seeking help. It's better to seek the help than sit around because it'll only get worse. I imagine there is worse, right, ladies, if you all could talk about that. What if you don't seek help? then what's next from your experiences? Um, maybe Bertie, you can start and then um, Leslie can tell us from a therapeutic. Sure. Well, I have, I just spoke to a, um, virtually, I spoke to a mom's group at a church this morning and I do that a lot because I'm so passionate about getting the word out about what this really looks like so that we can recognize it and not suffer in silence. And I always get that question. So what happens if I <laughs> never treat this? Yeah. And I always say it can last forever Changing my life here. and it, it brings tears down the face right away. And that's when they say, well, I feel like I've never gotten well and my baby's three years old. And I say, that's really possible. Let's not go another three years. Let's work yeah. on this. That's mm -hmm. what happens without treatment. It turns into chronic depression, chronic anxiety. I've had women come to see me six months pregnant and say, I never got well after the last baby. I was never myself again. And I don't want to do another pregnancy. I want, I'm finally here to seek help. I have, cannot do this again. But there are some people that say they went through two pregnancies, three pregnancies and continue to never have been themselves again. So it's, it might, I've heard people say it clears up. Like they'll say like, well, after about 10 years, I suddenly came back to myself. Why would you go 10 years without treatment? Wow. Yeah, but some people, it's chronic. When I've spoken to, again to groups at church, I've had 80 year old women walk up, tears rolling down their face and say, I finally know what I had. So Leslie, go on with that. When you don't get treatment. So it can interfere with bonding as well. It can interfere with the relationship that a woman has with her children. Even whenever there's so much love present, if there's also a lot of anxiety and irritability, think about how a three-year-old processes that, a four, a five, a six. If mom is you know, getting really irritable and overwhelmed and yelling at them for spilling something on the floor, you know, it, it it can affect the child as the child grows up. And so then you might see some anxiety in the children as they grow up, some depression in the children as they grow up. And then also, of course, interfering with the relationships that she has with herself, first and foremost, the relationship with herself, the relationship with her children, relationship with her partner or partners, relationship with her, um, with her family members, with her, with her friends. It, it can become pervasive and affect so much of, of her life and her functioning, not just, um, not just the symptoms of anxiety and depression, it can spill out over into every other aspect of her life. So the sooner she reaches out for help, the better. And I would wanna say too, going back to what we were speaking about before, if any of your listeners chooses a therapist and in that first therapy session does not feel like there's a connection there, it's okay to say that. It's okay to say, I think I'm going to try somebody else because mm -hmm. you owe it to yourself. If you're taking the time out to go ahead and seek that help, it needs to be with somebody that you feel a connection with, that you feel like you've, that you can build that relationship and that trust with. So that's an important note. Well, and I, yeah, along with that, I would say also that if um, someone says to me, they prefer to have a black or brown therapist. I'll do whatever I can do to help find that. Absolutely. Because okay. we, you know, we, we know our black and brown colleagues in the field uh -huh. and we can help find them. Right now, everything's telehealth. And so you can pretty much see anybody in the entire state you live in or someone from another state that has licensure in your state. So you can find out who's trained in perinatal mood disorders by going on the PSI directory. And it's literally psidirectory.com. And you can actually put in, like I can put in, I just did this recently. I can go in to find for who's trained in Indiana and I'll put in Indiana for location. And then for specifier, I'll put in provider of color. 
and it'll pop up all the providers of color, all the therapists or prescribers in Indiana. And so you can look for specific who takes what insurance. Um, sometimes when you get on psychology today and you're looking for a therapist, anybody can say they specialize in perinatal mood disorders. But to be on PSI's directory, you had to have had training, not just read one chapter on it, but you actually have had training because you can really mess people up when you don't know what you're doing in this. Yes, case. absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm so glad that you said that because for everyone who is listening, as you heard, we are talking and we said that at the beginning of the show, we're talking to the experts in the field. This is not hearsay. This is not conjecture. We're talking to people who are experts in the field. And as uh, Bertie just mentioned, you're going to be recommended to someone who has been fully trained and certified, not just someone that, oh, you know, let me just throw you to this person over there, or I don't know how they are, maybe. So you're, you're looking, you're going to get an expert. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Reese. Uh, I don't know if I missed it or what, but um, with postpartum, do you guys, um, what am I thinking? I'm glad we're all doing that today. <laughs> I don't feel alone anymore. <laughs> or uh, moms that are postpartum, or is it something? I don't know if you mentioned it or not. I'm not. I don't remember hearing it. But do they take? Do you give medication for that? Or is that uh, we missed? We didn't hear your voice in the beginning. Is it how do we get better? No, no. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to know, do you prescribe medication to postpartum mother, moms? Like they're going through that. Do you give them medication or is it something that they have to just, that's something that just passes? Okay, so that is about how do we get better? What are the, what's treatment options? Treatment options. Therapy. You always want to try therapy, honestly, first, mm -hmm. because studies show that therapy can actually do as well as medication. And even if they need medication, therapy on top of that is gonna be it. So we kind of look at it as you need medical evaluation, possibly medications. And I always say, if you're having more bad days than good days, or, and even with therapy and social support, or you're really just, you've waited already two years and you're, yeah. a, come on, let's just get, let's just go on meds. Or suicidal thoughts, right? To any kind of even passive, even passive suicidal right. thoughts without intent. That we don't really, it's time to start on meds. I always say like this, aren't you ready to feel good again? Let's just go, let's get on some medication. So I always say you need therapy, you need social support, which we do online support groups. We used to do them in person. I used to do them in person, but we do them online. So no matter where you are, you can find an online support group. And social support to me is so important. Um, so not just meds, not just therapy, or not just those two, but I need to be in a support group where I realize I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one who said, oh my gosh, I yelled, shut up at my baby. I'm not the only one who doesn't love motherhood every single second. Um, so also teaching, eating, sleeping, asking for time off, asking for a break. It's okay to take a break, ask for it. So eating, sleeping, going for walks, you don't have to exercise, that's a bad word, but moving, walking, not just sedentary. So just learning like what are those basic self-care things you need, but really looking at that three-prong thing, I almost call it four-prong that we kind of teach it in PSI, therapy, meds, social support, and then parenting classes. Because do you remember that when you had your first baby, you didn't have a clue what you were doing? You, we taught you how to change a diaper in a childbirth ed class with a plastic doll. We did right. not. Teach, <laughs> we did not teach how to clean up a baby that poops all the way up to the all back. All the way up. Right? Yeah, I I knew nothing about that. And for me, um, and I'll say, I'll say I'll keep this short. <laughs> Before when my friends found out that I was pregnant, everyone laughed because I was always a corporate person. Uh -huh. So everybody was like, 
you're not no and I always had and it, to this day I have a phobia of poop which is why I do not have a dog <laughs> because <laughs> I can't do the poop thing so when I had one of these poop machines I didn't know what to do with it and all my friends were like no way <laughs> so with that said Leslie I know you have to go so before you leave, however, I would like you to, again, just tell us in your sessions, um, what are some of, what's some of the advice that you want to give out and tell our listeners, please, how they can find you and where. Okay, so um, Birdie definitely covered the main parts of how you can get well and how to take care of yourself. The important thing also that I find is that as women, especially, we're so used to putting other people ahead of us. We're so used to caring for others. We're so used to saying, you know, letting everybody else's needs come before ours. It's not selfish to say, I need a break. I need a shower. I need some water. You know, that's one thing. Drink a lot of water. Make sure you're snacking, eating, eating. And taking good care of yourself, going outside, like Birdie said, not necessarily exercising, but getting some breaks, getting some fresh air. Um, but recognizing that taking care of yourself is also taking care of your baby and taking care of your children. If mom is not okay, nobody else is going to be okay. So it's necessary to put yourself first sometimes. And that is not selfish. That is the main thing that I'll always stress to the moms that I see. Um, but I am, um, like I said, I'm from South Louisiana, but I am now in South Alabama. My practice is in Fairhope. So I am licensed in Alabama and Louisiana and, um, I am online. I am, uh, I have a website, www.lesleytherold, that's spelled H-E-R-H-O-L-D, L-C-S-W.com. I'm on Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, I'm all over the place. But, um, but I am, I have been so happy to be included in this. And um, it was so nice to meet all of you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for trying as much as you possibly can to get this word out to get this to get this information out, because I know that now more than ever, moms are really needing to know that they're not alone. And Birdie, it was so nice to see you and, and hear you speak. Um, Cause like I said, I did the, the trainings. You're in some of the trainings that I participated in. I had done Karen Kleiman's training as well, wow. but, um, but yeah, so here being able to put a face to the name is, is, is wonderful as well. But, Yay, uh, we but were happy to do Carol, that. Thank, thank y'all <laughs> both so much for doing this. Um, um, thank you. Wonderful. And you guys take good care and stay, say as, safe and as sane as y'all possibly can right now as we as much as we can thank yes, you so much it was a thank pleasure having you here thank you so much thank y'all too y'all take care bye. yes ma'am birdie real quick birdie oh, sure, birdie i here. don't know if you have any time to stay with us but we hope that you do we have a couple more questions but yeah, you know just yes. i i was listening to carol when you were talking about when you had the the, the baby and but it was different in my case because my I had my mom my first baby and let me tell you something you would think that was her child because the <laughs> child used to cry in the middle of the night and I with the child and my mom would leave from her room and do like change the baby like and I'm just there and my dad had to say to her one night um that's not your child <laughs> that was a nice break for you though wasn't it like I, it's like i birthed my child for my mom yeah <laughs> my child. But, then, but how did that make you feel wasn't like birdie said wasn't it a break for you but now i'm thinking now the second one that i had she was not there so i'm thinking maybe that's why i was going through this whole oh my mom literally took over with the first one. So I really, you know, not, and now I'm, I'm thinking about it like the second one, I had to do it all, but I had to him all by myself. She wasn't there. I was here in America. She was in Jamaica, right? So here, I, so it's like, this is my first time being responsible. Yeah. You know, I'm saying, mommy, you should not have done that. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mommy said this and I'm done. I did my time. <laughs> this is on you. <laughs> the whole excitement of having a grandbaby and she wanted to make sure. And I'm just in the bed sleeping and she's doing everything. Like in the middle of the night. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Thank you so much. I do that occasionally for my daughter. I don't, I wouldn't do it night after night, but when they were little, I would say, I'll, I'm going to come over and I'll get up during the night and you two sleep. Right, right. Oh, they I wish I had serious? that. Serious? Yeah. And I give them nights out to go to the, to go to a hotel all by themselves and have dinner all by themselves. And I go watch two kids. Now I'm ready to leave the second they walk in the door because I'm so exhausted, but. Being a grandparent, right? Yes, yes, yes. Reese, turn your volume up just a little bit. Um, got some comments that you're kind of low. Am I I'm um, better now? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It was really, really an eye opener. You know, this postpartum because, as I said, I always thought it was a chemical. Had no clue it had. There's more to it. Right. Yeah. There's a lot more to it. And we're so educated today. And actually, Birdie, I am thinking about all the things that you were saying right now. And I'm just wondering, I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I carried some of that. Maybe not to the extent that you shared with us, but definitely some of that I experienced for a long time, probably still going through some of that, but I didn't know. Again, there is that stigma in the black and brown community. I thought, listen, yes. I am an executive. I know how to handle stuff. I am just fine. I do tough stuff every day. Right. This too shall pass. Right. You know, but I want to remind, I can't say it enough. You know, if you need help and you feel like something is wrong, go and get the help, you know, seek help. I was one of the people who didn't, and I probably should have. And my, I, I want to say this real quickly. Um, when I had my baby, uh, like I told you before, she refused to latch on. Mm -hmm. um, she wouldn't sleep at night. She, I felt rejected and dejected by my own child. And for me, and it's my one child. So I felt horrible about that. Um, I had a C-section, which was, so I was in pain all the time. Wow. Um, so there was so much happening. And then, you know, for the longest time, for in the beginning also, you know, my husband, he thought he was doing something so cute and so sweet. He was like, let's not have anybody come over. We're going to just bond as a family. Right. And yeah. And of course, so as a result, also my mom came to visit for a little while and she was so helpful when she was here, but then she was gone and I'm like, oh, mom. Don't leave me. Don't leave. Don't leave. But, you know, then she had to leave. And it's like, so I wish I knew that. But thank you because everything you're sharing with me today, this is so, I had no idea. Well, I'm just glad you had us because that is really common that people don't really know what it is or how many other people felt the same way. Because guess what? Everybody is lying on social media. You know, of they course. Say their life is perfect on, and so there's, they're on Facebook and on, even on uh, Instagram, all the different things like, oh, my life is, you know, I love this. Don't you love being a mom? Oh, sure. And it's kind of this fake thing that everybody does. And some moms would get off of social media because it looks like everybody else has it together right. but them. Right. And so I want everybody to know that there is help wherever you are. We do have volunteer coordinators in every state. We have our online support group. So I'm the certification director, but I'm also a volunteer for the state of Indiana. So if you're in Indiana, you get a hold of me and you find out where are the support groups, where are the counselors, where all, what can I do next to get help? And so I get calls text, emails, and there are volunteer coordinators in every state in the United States and in over 40 countries. But so, not everything is telehealth, telehealth, sorry, Bertie. No. If I'm in Florida and I feel comfortable with you, right? Say somebody like, I like how Bertie, you know, you know, I re Bertie resonates with me. Yeah. Can I, like stay in Florida and, and, and be in your group or see you or... 
So I don't do private practice. I did counseling and um, intakes and all of that when I worked for the hospital. Now I do trainings exclusively for PSI. I'm also the certification director and set up a certification program so, so that we can have a certification in perinatal mental health. But I do do support groups. Um, so anybody can sign up for those, but because I don't do private practice, but the answer was if I was in private practice, I would say to you, um, I don't take insurance across states. There, you can actually, some people that can do um, therapy across state lines, that they have some new thing because of COVID that people can go across lines, but you, they may not be able to take your insurance. They may be cash only. That's all those tricky parts. That's but right. um, there are some therapists that will do across state lines. Um, and, you know, also just, like I said, finding out who does take, um, finding out who you do click with and you feel trust with. And maybe you want to find someone who looks like you. Um, right. It took me one. I went to a therapist and I didn't like how I felt because I need to be able to talk. I want to, that's the right. way there. I don't want to, you know, hold anything. I want to tell you everything. And I didn't feel that connection. Right. I didn't go back to her, you know, so. And I'm glad you kept looking because what will happen is people say, I tried therapy. It didn't work. I didn't click with that person. Right. And I say, I'm sorry, you had a bad experience. Don't stop there. Let's find you someone. Yeah. yeah. So, so Birdie, you. another listener question. I'm sorry. Another listener oh, question is, um, unfortunately, one question um, was really for Leslie, but she's no longer here. They were asking about the frequency of therapy that would be recommended. I didn't get to ask her, but from, from your perspective, I you talked about, that. oh, okay. Um, so if you can answer that, and then the next one too, is in terms of the support groups that you mentioned at PSI, mm -hmm. um, if, if someone reached out to PSI, et cetera, can PSI then help them to find a therapist in their state or somewhere else? Yes. So those two questions. Yeah. Well, the answer is absolutely yes. Um, like I said, if you, wherever you are, whatever state you're in, if you go to our website, postpartum.net, then you go to the tab that says get help and then hit the next thing you're going to hit under that tab is find local resources. And when you then go, it gives you the state, United States map, or it says international. So if you're in the States, you hit whatever state you're in and it'll pop up and tell you who your volunteer coordinators are that will, like I show up for Indiana, I'm one of them and you will see, and then you'll contact me and I will help you find a therapist and I'll give you ideas for what books you should read, what I think is going to help you. I'll talk to you on the phone first, like a free intake, like, you know, one kind of free therapy session. Yeah, oh, wow. I like that. You said the magic word of free, free therapy intake people. Did you all hear that? Yeah, you yeah. can get the free intake, meaning like a consultation, et cetera, walk you through and help you to find the right program or person for you. So right. I hope you all are listening. And they can also you. free support groups and you'll hear other people like you. And so that also feels good. But even during support groups, I'll help people like, here's what you need to do when we get off. I'm going to help you find someone in your state because I know how to look and I know people all over the United States. So many times I can actually give them a name because I've been doing this so long that I know everybody. Um, so and the other question was, how long does therapy? It depends on what you need. Some people don't need therapy at all. Some people need medication, social support, learn good self-care, and they're great. Some people really need to work on some things, work on there's lots of reasons to do therapy. And so that is the sessions are some people need in the beginning, maybe two sessions a week. Maybe then you go to every week, maybe every other week, and you'll know the therapist and the client at some point will figure out, they'll know you know what, you're doing great. For now, we can go ahead and move on. And then let's make a plan for if you relapse or if you need help again, you know, I'm here. Um, okay. So 
they recommended to be honest is 10 to 12 sessions total usually by 10 to, but doesn't mean that you have to stop at 10 to 12 i mean you can do therapy after my husband died i did grief therapy for i don't know probably six to nine months it was just something that was comforting to me to like Reese said to be able to say whatever i wanted to say in that session um because you can't always get other people to hear you or understand you so so 10 to 12 sessions is the usual i would say okay Okay, good. And and those 10 to 12 sessions, you can do them over time. It doesn't have to be two sessions for each week or yeah. something like that. You can spread it out. Yeah, it depends on the, you know, your needs. Some people are fine after three or four sessions. They just needed to hear some of the stuff of what we talked about today. They just didn't really know what perinatal mood disorder was or what they had or, and you go, you know what? you have OCD. I didn't know that. So you just kind of do some of that psychoeducation and yes. tell them, let's work on some stuff. And I had one woman to say to me after the very first session, she said, you know what? Thank you very much, Bertie. I am going to be fine. I just realized today that I'm not the only person who doesn't get dressed until noon. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes just, I don't get dressed at all. <laughs> Especially in this pandemic, right? Yeah. I put on makeup just for you guys today. Exactly. Same <laughs> here, okay? Yep. yep. So she just didn't know that she thought every other mom out there was getting up, putting on makeup, getting dressed, doing her hair, getting all dressed up, and doing motherhood perfectly. Oh, it was you know, there was a time I thought that too. And I have a friend who I thought was just so perfect in terms of, and then after a while you get to learn that that is not the case. We're all humans. We're yep. all dealing with different issues and we have to remember that. And you touched on something so important, Bertie, when you talked about social media and you talked about Instagram, the term Insta is instant meaning that is just someone takes a picture it's a clip in an instant it's not reflective or representative of their entire life you know and we have to remember that and keep driving that point to people and because that's what social media wants you to believe but it's not accurate right and then people don't tell them the truth actually yeah. No, nobody's yeah. going to put on Facebook. You know what, you guys, you know, that real gushy, madly in love feeling you told me I was going to have when I first saw my baby. Well, I didn't feel that. Who puts that on Facebook? Nobody. Yeah, no one. And that is tied to the stigma and the shame. Again, yeah. it's that yeah. shame and that fear. It is. Bertie, um, is are, are men affected as well by this? Glad you asked. One in 10 men um, develop postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, and also not a lot of studies, but same sex couples, the non-birthing parent can also have depression, anxiety, mood disorder. Um, so, what, but we do have studies that one in 10 men develop and we've had huge studies, two different huge studies on that. So. And their number one risk factor is if their partner has postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, they're at higher risk of getting it. Because like Leslie said earlier, if mom ain't happy and falling apart, everybody falls apart. And many times think about this, after baby's born, the focus goes from the pregnant woman to now the focus is on the baby. Then the pregnant the now postpartum person's next. And in fact, if they had the nerve, the birthing parent would say, what about me? I'm exhausted. And then the partner or the dad is way out of the picture. It's, mm. and uh, let's just use, I'll use he, he misses sex. He misses his partner. Um, it's no longer just us anymore. And he doesn't really have anyone. He's being ignored because guess what? The birth mom is exhausted and she's taking care of a baby all the time and she doesn't have extra time to give and she just wants to go to bed when it's time to go to bed. Please don't ask me for sex. You know, I'm exhausted. So you've got all that going on. So it affects their relationship and then they become depressed or they could both 
from almost day one, one dad said to me, I don't think we're cut out for this. I think we've made a huge mistake. And he was as depressed as she was. Like people say behind closed doors, I wish I could go back. If I could go back, I'd go back. Uh, we shouldn't have done this. I don't like right. what's changed our lives. And so, yes, it can also affect dads and partners. Okay. And there are also great websites you can find, again, all that good information on postpartum.net. Okay. You can call our warm line if you just want to talk to someone, and then that someone will hook you up with someone in your area. But dads, we also have a dad's online support group. We have a once a month chat with the dad's expert. And um, like I said, support groups. And then there's on there, we have websites, other places they can look for dads who are with someone who has postpartum depression and for dads who themselves are experiencing postpartum depression. Both. Good to know. So mm -hmm. again, Birdie, before we wrap, um, it's, I have psidirectory.com, mm -hmm. and this is if you're looking for a particular provider, right? In your area. Um, in your area to help you. So you can go online and you look at psidirectory.com. And then the other site that you mentioned, if you could remind us, because I'm going to post these links once yes. we're done you for wanna, everyone. The main one you want is just postpartum.net. And that's where you find everything through PSI. Okay. You can even so post find the directory there, but um, it'll take you to that PSI directory. But postpartum.net is where you find help, where you find information, you get education. Um, you'll see where we do trainings, when they are. We're doing trainings once or twice a month for people that want to take trainings. You'll see our social support groups on there. Um, just get on there and look around. Lots of fun stuff on our site. But I wish that everyone knew that there is a place to find help. But they can get Excellent. on free. Mm -hmm. Books. Excellent. We have a bookstore and we have all the best books in the bookstore. Awesome. Awesome. You know, as a... Um, I just tell you this real quick because we have a third partner who's coming on shortly with her segment. As a, I'm a voiceover artist, uh, Birdie, and um, as part of oh. my voiceover, it's coincidental. And I'm going to play that piece today in our voiceover segment um, a little later on in the show. Um, I did a voiceover piece, which I'll share with you guys, everybody who's listening. It was on postpartum depression. <laughs> And um, Charlotte Perkins Gilman did a book called um, Behind the Yellow Wallpaper. Yeah, and it's really I know. I'm behind... I know you are. That's why I'm mentioning it to you. And it's so, so um, there's another, there's an author that kind of did a, a, a narration or a, a summary of her take on the book and asked me to voice it for her. So I'll play that later on. Maybe I'll share it with you because I don't know if PSI needs this is a shameless plug. <laughs> needs, a, needs a voiceover PSA <laughs> for your okay. trainings, et cetera. Okay, good I'll to share know. It I'll with you. That <laughs> I'll share it with you later. But with that, Bertie, I am so thankful, so appreciative that you joined us today. And we thank you tremendously. Sure. Thanks for having me. And if you need anybody in the future, you just ask me who should... Who should you get a hold of for future shows? And I'll hook you up with somebody. Yes. Keep in mind. We I love it. Up. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I'm Thank you, Birdie. Nice to meet you both. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And now... We need, you need to turn on, turn your mic on. Yes, Kim, you're mute. You're mute. And Be quiet, Andrew, let me hear you, you know. <laughs> we have mic business. Every week we have to tell her to <laughs> I know, right? Every week. Like some people, they don't need to talk enough. You know what I'm saying? Gee whiz, I guess everybody has something. 
Miss Kimberly don't know how to take off the mute button of her phone. <laughs> well, welcome, 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 everybody. We have our weekly treat coming up right now, which is commonly known as our health and wellness segment with Miss Kimberly. Dun, 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 and today, Miss Kimberly, if you could tell us what we're in for. Well, today I'm so sorry and everything that I'm just now coming on, ladies and miss and everything, but this is a serious work day today. So I work, 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 and I felt bad if I cut out from you guys completely. So I didn't know what else to come up with and everything because things had got turned around. So today I'm in the middle of performing a chemical peel with my client, my beautiful client, Nicole, which agreed at the last minute for me to do this. And all. <laughs> yeah, Thank last... you, Nicole. We appreciate it. <laughs> we got a bird's eye view for this today. Yes. Yeah, she's amazing. So right now we're in the middle of doing her chemical peel. So let me just explain to you, because uh, she's in relaxation mode still right now. Uh, we've already put three layers of the peel on. She has one more layer of this peel. She's going to look absolutely fabulous. So I'm just going to show you the process of what we're doing and how I'm going to do uh, this process. With the chemical peel uh, doing this, this is the right time. The reason why I'm doing this now today is because this is the time now that we're going to be performing these pills. That pills should be performed on uh, any type of treatments now during the time of this uh, this uh, this period where it's nice and cool. This is the downtime that you want to get a chemical peel, which helps with numerous amount of things. So it will help with any acne breakouts. Um, it would also help with any type of um, fine lines and wrinkles, lifting and firming to the skin, texture of the skin, hyperpigmentation and all. So what we're working with with Nicole here today, Nicole is a um, client of mine from in the past. Um, I haven't seen her in about a year or so, so she's been very busy and all, which she's a realtor and also she's a busy, busy woman. So she's been busy selling homes and stuff so and buying for herself as well. So she got back and she's, oh my God, she's got to get back. So what's happening now? Not seeing um, Nicole face being the way it is now with the breakouts, but right now with all the COVID and stuff, she started getting some more breakouts and hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So right now we're going to perform her last because she was doing her cooling down moment and we're going to perform her, um, her last uh, uh, treatment or her last peel on her face now. And I'll show you my step-by-step -step what I'm getting ready to do. So right now, she's already have three layers. She's pulling off. I don't know if you can see the fan over there. Can you see the fan? Are you able to see anything? Do you see the uh, We're seeing, but we're not really seeing the detail, unfortunately. And we know you only have two hands, so. <laughs> yeah. see. OK. Uh, there's the fan. I don't know if you. Yeah, we see the fan. Okay. You see the fan? Okay. So she's. Yeah. No, we're getting ready to now. Can you see now that I'm getting ready to start doing? Wait, hold on. You'll see me. Girl. Oh, that noise. Huh? That's the music. The girl have to relax. No, when you move your phone. Huh? When you're moving your phone, it's a whole bunch of noise. I never use my phone. That's not. I'm not. My phone. I don't have my phone. What are you moving? Oh, this is the, the um thing here. Okay. The tablet. You might be hearing the fan. If you get, you're hearing all kinds of noises in here. All right. Anyway, so the fan, the purpose of the fan is is what, Kim? That's actually to help cool her off. What do you think? Okay. Okay, you're good. Okay. Did some of the noise stop? No, you're oh. Then no, you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Anyway, the fan is to help cool down. Um, the fan is to help cool down the skin because it feels a little hot, a little tingly. So okay. she feels a little tingly, but now she's okay now. So we're gonna go ahead and start her fourth layer, and then I'm gonna put her corrections on. So here we go. So that that you're painting on, um, is there a specific brush that you're using with that? And, and what are you putting on? Yes, 
this is a um this is a facial brush. So I'm using okay. a facial brush and I'm using a peel, a corrective peel that I'm using for her skin. And the peel, what is it gonna do for her? The peel, what is it gonna do for her? It's actually gonna help her with hyperpigmentation. It's going to help with any spots, any breakouts, what you have on her face or anything, uh, fine lines and wrinkles. This is what the peel does. It's going to help brighten up her skin. It's going to help remove any of the blemishes that she has going on with her skin right now. Okay. So we're basically at the very end because we already did majority of her peel right now. How long does it normally take to do um this chemical peel how many layers did she do she did this is her fourth layer oh wow yeah i thought she, you said four layers like a champ can handle four, yeah, four right layers. Now she is yeah yeah right now you're talking and she's flaring up so fan on here we go baby all right i'm gonna okay, cut so off the let me not talk for a minute because I don't want you to prolong her, her treatment because four layers is really tough, everybody. So for our listeners out there, last week, Reese helped me with this because Kim got to concentrate on this poor lady's face. Last yeah. week, she told us that four, four layers is like tough, right? <laughs> yeah, you got to be a tough girl. She's a tough girl, though. <laughs> I did one, one layer and I was like, ooh. ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> One layer? <laughs> One layer. You can't manage you can't manage me, my girl. You can't manage me. Oh, oh my goodness. And right now this lady, this poor lady is doing, but she's gonna be beautiful and fabulous when she's done. So she is willing. You know what they say for beauty, right? No pain, no gain. That's right. And right now we're putting on her correction. So right now while she's cooling off, I'm actually putting on some moisturizer here. That's actually going to soothe her skin. That's going to help her doing the process right now of cooling off. Watch how fast she cools off. Listen. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's going to go away in a second. Watch. You're going to have me going in like, I'm going to man up because Nicole did four and I can't do one. I'm going to man up. <laughs> yeah, okay. You're on your own, Reese. <laughs> Reese only did one, only one look of um, something that she do. One. Yeah, exactly. Sitting here talking about she go mad. She go woman up and try to do four layers. She can't even handle past one layer. She said, are you kidding, Reese? <laughs> You're going to chicken out. <laughs> but you know what? That's all right. That's why they have different layers. She so it's whatever you can handle. She can't manage me. I mean, for telling she can't manage me. There is no shame in your game, Reese. Is what you can handle and be proud of it, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> I know for me, I'm, I'm not even going to pretend. You ain't going to be able to handle all of this. Uh-uh. You, you, you nope. don't look like you'll be able to handle, handle this either. Mm-mm. No, no, let me ask you something. Now that you're doing the four layers, does that work quicker to her um, on her skin quicker than you would, right? Say that again. The fact that you're putting four layers on, it works mm -hmm. her quicker on her skin. Uh huh. That's what I'm asking. Like, as far as me who's doing one would have to do how many weeks um, as opposed to her doing four? If if I'm understanding the question correctly, you're saying if she's if the person is just getting one layer, would they get the result? All right. If I'm doing one layer, how many weeks would it take my skin, or it just depends on the person's skin, how quickly it works? Oh, it depends on what peel you're getting too, hun. Because whatever peel that you got for the one um the one layer, it's a different type of peel and what ingredients that's in there. Oh, uh, okay. So. The one, the, the one that I can really speak about and I can tell you about, this here peel, this takes about seven um, seven to 10 days, business days of peeling. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, when I hear the term peel, it sounds painful just by itself already. So is it sort of like, you know, and, and I'm envisioning this and tell me if it's something like this while you keep working, Kim, 
Um, is it like when you go and you get a wax, right? And you put the thing on and then you rip it off. Is that what we're talking about with this peel? And are you peeling off skin? I literally do not know. <laughs> Reese, why are you laughing? <laughs> No, 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 no. It, it doesn't go like that. So what happens is when you're peeling, so this is... Like Reese, said, you're laughing at me. <laughs> do I sound like a country bumpkin? Really, yes, yeah, you do. But here's the thing. <laughs> she said, yeah, yes, you do. <laughs> so the thing about it is when you're, do, when you're getting a peel and everything, right? When you're getting a chemical peel and when, whoever you're going to and explaining to you getting a chemical peel, you do not want to peel it off because you will make your face even worse than what it is. Okay. It will pigmentate. So you're not supposed to peel off what you're seeing. You're supposed to let it fall off, really and truly. You're supposed to let actually let it fall off your skin. Don't peel it off. And then you'll have things and stuff like, let me just show you the box real quick, what she's going to take home. She'll take home a post-treatment kit that's actually going to help her. See, post-treatment kit that actually have the products in here, that's actually going to take, she's going to take this home so this can help her along with her peel. And that's what I was asking Andrew, did she have anything um, to take home with her and all when she, when she did her chemical peel. So usually with the peels that I use, this is a dermatologist line also too, and everything. So when you're using this peel and all, this is why Nicole was saying, she came back because the results that she'd gotten before of getting this peel before and all how her face looks amazing. So using, they take home a post-treatment kit. It's included in the price. So they take home the post-treatment to help them along with their peel. So you get a cleanser, you get um, Clinicom, which is hydrocortisone to help you because they already give you that stuff. They don't tell you to go out and buy that stuff. You get an SPF, you get a night moisturizer and a day moisturizer too as well. And that's going to help you with your peel along the way. And then it takes with this peel that I'm using, it takes between two to two to three days afterwards when you start peeling. It could be two days. It could be three days. It depends on your skin. That's what that's I said. I never did one before. And um, yeah, I never did one before. And I just saw things peeling on my face. Uh-huh. Okay. So this, and then he said, that's what's going to happen. And that's basically it. So I go back. <laughs> I got a, 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 he gave me a foam cleanser thing, thick, uh -huh. very thick. And then the retinol, whatever he prescribed. Okay. Yeah. How you been feeling afterwards? I, it's just one, I just did one. So it, there's no, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to get with hyperpigmentation. Let me let me just let you know too. Also with hyperpigmentation, I tell all of my clients. What is seeing? If anybody's watching, this is what it is. A face mm. looks like a body brown. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually see it. I don't know if you can see Carol. You can actually see. Yeah, it's hard to see, you know. And hey, listen, and we all have something that we are dealing with. That's right. On the, the as Kim said, we have to wear that sunscreen. Yeah, we important. It is very, very important. important. And when you have hyperpigmentation, it takes several treatments. Uh, more than just one treatment, it takes several treatments in order to get your skin to where you want it to be at. So it's right. not just treatment and everything like that. With a uh, deeper hyperpigmentation, like what Reese has, it probably takes about three or four treatments, and in between other treatments too as well. To help her with her skin to break through. Right. Mm -hmm. I hope so because I'm tired of seeing this. I really am. It really gets into me. Yeah. Well, we'll we, we, me and you are talking anyway because we gotta we gotta work on some things with you okay. anyway. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So we'll we'll talk about that. And uh, but that's usually what happens. But it's not a thing that it couldn't it couldn't happen. So that's why you know I'm not saying anything because I've dealt with that a lot of people and everything like that. So. This is the right time. We actually remember recently we were talking about this is kind of the time we were waiting for anyway, chemical peel season. So it's about to be on. Okay. And also no worries on that. Should we I'll take care of her. The better. That's what it does, you know, and everything, you know, with chemical Very peel. nice. So right now she's in her wind down uh, mode. She's relaxing. Her face is cooling off the products that I put on her skin. And all is working. Let me just talk to her and just you guys can hear. 
Nicole, what are you feeling down to? One to ten. See, she's down to a number two. See, Carol? Mm-hmm. Down to a number two. Um, ten being the worst and one being the best. She's now. Okay. Before, <clears throat> excuse me. Before you were at what, what number, baby? A five. Before she was at a five, like five or six. Okay. <clears throat> excuse me. She was like a five okay. or six. Now she's at a two because I've already put her stuff on. So it calms gotcha. down. The moment. Okay. Are you able to, and if you're not, say say that you're not, are you able to move the camera with some light so we can see Nicole's face or did Nicole not give permission for that? I don't know. Oh, she said it's fine. Hold on one second. Oh, okay. I just want to see and show everybody what it looks like, what she's getting on her face, what her face looks like. Is it a clear solution? Is it, you know, for people like myself who may not be, you know, aware of the entire peel. Go ahead, Reese. You got permission to laugh. Um. <laughs> you don't know the question. Reese shouldn't be laughing. Reese, know anything either? Okay, but I don't see anything. So, is it a clear? Can you describe it for us? Yeah, it's more of a clear. Wait, hold on. Can you see her now? Okay, that's better. Yeah. There you go. Wait. Perfect. Go down a little bit. Please. Go down some more. Lower. Yep, perfect, right there. Okay, okay. All right, we see, yeah. So it's a clear thing. You don't really see anything. No, but if you see a little bit of frosting, like the whiteness on her face, this is mm -hmm. most likely she really is going to peel because mm -hmm. she's going on with her skin at that particular area. Okay. So she's gonna she's going to peel a lot there, which is good. That's that's really good and everything like that. But the peel makes you look like you just had like somebody just put a bunch of oil on your face. <laughs> right, exactly. It just looks like she's got oil on her skin. So for everybody who's listening through the radio and who are not seeing it, we're just describing what we're seeing for the listeners. It's oily. It looks like um, just oil applied all over the face, but uh -huh. it is working through the skin. It. that's it and she's feeling it working so i want to turn that fan back on oops sorry okay <laughs> turn that fan back on but she can still you can still see it because i just awesome. want to make sure so she can be comfortable so is it also on the eyelids or you don't do it over the eye i'm sorry i'm just asking for everybody else out there who can ask so do you make do you put it on the eyelids too or no no, only the face and um, a little bit underneath the eye area, a forehead, chin, nose, um, and you can do it over the lips too, a little bit too. Sometimes uh, a lot of people, even if they have some problems, um, it feels like it's burned over the lip area and all that. Right. But, um, I would imagine that's sensitive. It's very, very sensitive. So a lot of okay. people don't really like it there. So I, I try not to put it there in that and that area. And the chin, right? Yeah. Does it go on the chin? How about the neck in the neck area? Yes, no? Uh it's that's a different peel. If we are okay. not this particular one, but a different one. Like now, okay. after we finish with um Nicole, we're going into doing a back treatment. Unfortunately, I'll be leaving you guys at that point, but um we're going into her back treatment. She's going to do a back peel as well for her back. Okay. So Wow, um, Nicole is tough. Yeah. <laughs> she's the truth. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is, the back peel is not as bad, so she's going to be sitting up when I'm doing the back peel. And uh, it was better to do the face And the peel. back peel and the face peel in one day. Wow, she's a trooper. Oh, yeah, I got men that do that, honey. No, please. <laughs> my, my, my best friend guy does all his arms. His back, he's a bodybuilder. Best friend, he does his back, he does his arms, he does his face. <laughs> wow. And he sits up here and he moves with those pecs. You know how those pecs go up and down? I said, oh, yikes. Man. So how long does that stay on, on Nicole's face? This is self-neutralizing. So this will stay on Nicole tonight, overnight. And then um, she doesn't have to do anything for her to start doing her treatment tomorrow. Oh. Her mm -hmm. So she doesn't have to do anything to her face tonight. Nice. And how long does that last, like um, the effects or... So how long will it last on her before she needs to do another one? Oh, she can, it can take like another month. Um, you can do it for the next following month because like the next month or whatever if she decides she wanted because I know going into the Christmas time, sometimes people, it's a lifestyle thing when you get the peel. So mm -hmm. I always 
clients, if you want to do it in the uh, Christmas time, sometimes people like to do it before Christmas or after the holidays, they like to do it. But um, we'll do another one for her for December and then going into G January, then I'm going to try another treatment with her. I'll do some nano needling or something. So we're going to mix up treatments and stuff with her. So that's what I'm doing for this, this fall. I noticed that's been working. Mixing treatments instead of just doing all straight plain treatments. That's how they get the best. Okay, so those are the clicking noises you're hearing, Reese. I guess when, when unfortunate listeners, um, what you're hearing is um, Kim is gracious enough to um, take us into her spa and with her camera and show us what is happening with Nicole, who is her client right now. So when, when she moves, she only has two hands and she is working on the client. So when she moves the camera, you are hearing that noise, um, just so you all know, because, you know, we get the comments over here from our fastidious listeners. <laughs> we know we're going to get the comments. What is that noise? Yeah. So we're letting you know now what you're hearing. And it's not right. this time. Thank you very much. And it's not Reese this time. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can tell them it's Kimberly from Kimberly's Glam Spawn Boutique. That's the noise. But it's yes. the, you might hear the fan in the background and also to the, the music is going to with the ocean music in the background. You might hear that pushing noise and I hear all that too with the background of that. Oh no, we don't hear that. We're just hearing when the camera is moving. That's fine. That's all we're hearing when the camera there is a lot of clicky, 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 clicky um noise. Oh. But um that's all right. The music is fine. So so tell us about that. You you put the music on for every oh every client in hours. I, I love to listen to the music. It also helps me relax and um unwind and my client too so they can be relaxed. Because when they're relaxed, they're in a different state of mind. That way, is it can... music you said, or is it like sound of the waves and this? And, what is it you're playing? It's a spa relaxation music. Oh, but it's okay. Waves. Mm -hmm. It's like ocean waves. Mm -hmm. Carol, when I go there, I start snoring. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll snore anywhere, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, know that you're doing a great job. <laughs> Everybody around us. I'm, I'm sure you don't sleep when you're getting a, a chemical peel, though, because that peel will have you a little behind and she never attention. With me, she never get no chemical peel, but she gets. Uh, when Reese come and get Piasha, I'll be a snoring. She'll drop some money in this place, yeah. <laughs> you sleep while Kim works. Oh my goodness. You can't talk to her because she's a god, man. The next time she comes there, Kim, make sure she gets a chemical peel. See how she sleeps through that. I know, right? I'm going to see how that's going to work out. I bet you she won't sleep. <laughs> What'd you say, Reese? Your mic is very low. She's going to put five layers. She's going to put five layers on me. Yeah, make sure you don't fall asleep because she'll put five layers on you. That's right. Put 20. She'll talk about five. <laughs> Andrea, you hear me at top of your put 20 lay upon you. Oh man, listen to you. <laughs> now you know you better not fall asleep the next time you go to Kim's spa. Yeah. Sleepy, sleepy hollow. <laughs> so that's the procedure of doing the chemical peel in here and all. So I hate to do this to you guys, but uh, I'm going to listen to you guys, but I'm going to put this down because I got to check on my client and make sure she's okay. Absolutely. She's well relaxed and everything. And she did give me the opportunity. I'm glad it was a chemical peel and not the facial. If it's the facial, then I have a video with her and all that. And then she can lose my her relaxation. No, that's when you have a... Uh, uh... A uh, 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 professional to come in while you're doing the facial over the radio. Hold the camera. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll have somebody doing. I'll have somebody actually doing it. I won't be doing it, so they won't even know. So uh, when, before we do that, yeah, that's a total different thing. But I just wanted to kind of give you, since I'm doing this, because, and then I know that I was going to be. I knew I was busy today, so I just said, you know what? I asked Nicole, and she was just graceful enough to say, you know, I can go ahead and do it and everything like that. So I just appreciate that. 
All right. Awesome. And we appreciate you not leaving us stranded today with this amazing segment that we enjoy and we look forward to every week. We love to hear about the health and wellness stuff. So we're glad you actually, um, you didn't just quit on us, but you stayed with us and you took us inside the life of the spa to show us what you're doing. Talk about her too. It's not going to be the first time. It's going to be plenty more times and all. But anyway, yes, but, but make sure you get a cameraman who can show us what you're doing. Come on, I get a cameraman. All right, go, back, <laughs> go back to your, your thing, darling. Okay. Thank, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Um, we, and thank um, you, Nicole, for letting us do this to you. She said, she said you're welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she said she can't wait for her new skin. You know, nice. She, I'll be showing you um, Nicole's updated pictures. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All righty. So I'll try to join in. I don't know if I'll be finished by the time Carol, um, you know, and all. All right. We're but here. I still actually stay on, but I'm just going to be busy. I'm not going to be, you know, interacting, whatever. All righty. No problem. Just mute your phone if you're going to stay on then. Yeah, I'm just going to just do my thing because I'm going to be paying attention to her right now. All right. Okay. Put all us right. on mute. Now you can put us on mute. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's um, Kimberly's segment, health and wellness, which we love. That was cool. Yeah, it was. And if you guys missed it, you can come over, go over to YouTube, and you'll actually see it on our yes. channel. Yes, you will see what we were looking at just now um, on our YouTube channel. Um, and so we'll remind you. And it's so easy. It's let's connect with a K. So let's, the word L-E-T-S, K-O-N-N-E-C-T, you know, um, on YouTube. So you go on YouTube and you go in the search bar and you type let's connect and you'll see us. Go ahead, Reese. Yeah, you'll see all of the shows that you missed. It's on, it's on YouTube. So hit subscribe. Because I guess when you hit subscribe, when we post anything, you get notified. Exactly. You get notified. notified. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So whenever you hit that subscribe button, so make sure you're subscribing to us. Uh, we need the support. We thank you. We know that people are checking us out because we get comments. We get so many people who are telling us how much they appreciate all of the content, all the information, but a lot of people are forgetting to hit the subscribe button. They're going, they're viewing, they're looking, they're following us on Facebook, they're following us on Instagram, or some, some people are forgetting to follow us too, but people are checking us out because we do look at the analytics and it shows us that you folks are watching but you're forgetting to subscribe. Now, when you subscribe to us on YouTube, you get to see all any new content that we post. As soon as we post something, you get a notification telling you that, okay, it is there now, go check it out. Otherwise, it's kind of like, you remember when you remember, we know how busy you are. You all are living uh, in busy lives. You don't have time to be just focusing on Let's Connect as much as we would like you to. <laughs> We get it. So make sure that you subscribe so you can get notified of our new content as soon as we post something. All right. Yes, yes. And I was gonna say something, and as you really just you better not forget what I gotta say now. I forgot. It will come back. <laughs> it will come back. Usually your memory is pretty good. You're thinking about something else today, Reese. What I was gonna say, we and you know, we have a lot more interesting sh topics that we're gonna talk about. So, I mean, we want you to continue to listen to us, tell your friends about us, have them listen because this is just not normal show with music and talking about our ears, you know, or talking out our mouths. We actually have people that come on that, you know, with substance, things that you can leave with learn all that good stuff we're gonna have fun but at the same time it's more educational you know right we want right to you know 
spread the word around with let's connect exactly it you know because like you said Reese, i'm so glad you pointed that out um you know there are a lot of other shows obviously that you can choose to listen to of course it's your option we want you to come back and be with us every week and tell your friends you're free to take our content and send it to friends because you know what we know each other the best i may have friends who are in need of some of the content that we have we don't know that your friend is in need so we're not able to reach them but you can so if you share the information with your friends family um everybody that you want to share with um feel free to do so we welcome everyone because as you can see we do hard work we put in a lot of hard work to make sure that we're bringing you good quality content we're not just bringing you our opinions which of course we always work that in you know we're always going to work that in we are very three very opinionated women and we're going to share our opinions we sure is, we sure is. <laughs> but but what we are always going to do is bring you good content, bring you stuff that you care about, bring you things that affect you, what is affecting you. That's what we want to focus on, not just hearsay. And we're not just going to bring you, um, like I said, um, hearsay, conjecture, opinions only. We're going to bring you the experts in their respective fields. Look at the, the, the guests that we had today amazing a renowned speaker and trainer in this industry from a, a major organization postpartum support international well, you know, amazing organization as well as leslie her you know what's so funny about that you found one speaker i found one speaker and had no idea that they connected yes this is how life works and this is why i'm telling our audience right now connect share that is the whole premise of our show let's connect because in some way shape or form we're all connected you know we are and on our show we're exploring that and we're not afraid to explore that we're all connected and we're going to continue to connecting each one of you with each other and also if you want to if you have a topic that you want to, you know, someone you want us to discuss, shoot us an email, let us know, you know what, I'm interested in this topic. How about doing that? You know, like today we were talking about raising teens as a wow, that needs to go in a topic itself. Yes. Right? So, you know, just stuff like that, you know, let us know. Yes. What let us know what topics you guys are specifically interested in. All righty. So that's that. That's the promo for Let's Connect. You got it. So now we're going to move on to your, your, your segment. Oh. Everybody knows about Carol's segment. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're neat with the plug-in, you know? I, oh, yes. Or you be like, oh, and by the way, did you know? Did you, you just neat with it. You know, that's right i have to be you know that's what life is all about that's what we're here for you know if we don't connect with each other you know we had we had an opportunity right there the organization is there they do training they do all the stuff they're right in the same field why not connect you can't right beg. you can't beg you can't beg for a a a, 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 a item that you wanted me to send for you but you can't, I know, right? you can't beg well, I see that as marketing rather than begging. It's marketing. Okay. Man. That's right. Right. <laughs> we have a guest right now. Hi, Miss Suli. Your mic. Hello. You're on mute, but we can see you just fine. Welcome. Thank you. You can hear me now? We can hear you loud and clear. And okay. Who, where Hi. Are you? Hi, how are you? Where are you? I'm great, thanks. I'm in Coral Springs. Kimberly actually gave me the, the Zoom link. Tell me I can listen on. Oh, well, you can listen and you're on live. Oh, I am on live. Hey, I'm on live. Oh. Hey. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you talked about the last 30 minutes of our show. 
I don't know if you know we have it's on Wednesdays at three to six. We do. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that that it was um a three hour thing. Yeah, you actually missed a good show today. We had a, we talked about postpartum. Oh wow, wow, wow! Don't worry. Yeah, catch it on YouTube. We have a channel, so you can go over to YouTube and you catch the whole episode. Oh, I'll see the whole thing. Oh, okay. All right, but you feel free to join us. That's this is what we want. We want more people yes. to, you know, come in and interact with us and chat. Or we love chatting on three hour oh, with chat. And me, I was born with a gift of gab, so I'll enjoy that a lot. <laughs> you need to come. You need to come on Wednesday. Yes, I was. I was born. I have a lot to share and love to share. Okay, then that's good. Well, now you have the link. You can join us. We, okay, yes, I you will. can join us, you and everybody else in the sound of our voice right now. Join us and come chat with us. Whatever topics that we are talking about, that's what we want. We want you guys to jump on with us, share with us, let us know what's going on with you. Let us know how you feel about the topic that we've been All right, talking about. Before you do your segment, since we have a guest on there, we don't know if Echo, we, don't, we really never have guests on here, so we got to use her up. Um, Sue. We were talking today about kids, right? Raising kids today, punishing kids. When we were growing up, if the punishment that we got should be mm -hmm. for the new ki for the kids now, what of is course, it? you think so? Yes, yes, I think so. Even though some of it would have been considered as child abuse in no time, because some of the real Jamaican parents them never know of a parent, but then. I mean, a lot of the discipline, because you know what? It made most of us who we are. I understand that. But you thinking, do you think beating, beating kids now in this time is effective? No, because no, no, no. Because, mm -mm. um, well, I never grew up like that. Luckily for me, I was in a household where. Um, oh, super where... pop on. Super pop on. Super pop on. Okay. I never be, I never believe in in actual physical beating them. What? I made them be afraid of me talking. All right, but how do you how do you punish them? Take away their privileges. What privileges? Like the cell phones, you know them them cell phone, the cell phones be kids like when you when you tell them to read, okay, coming like you're punishing them. So that, that's what, but luckily for me, I can knock on wood. I have three kids and I don't know if it's because I drive the fear of God, not them, but I have eyes in the back of my head and up in the roof and all over. But I, I wasn't one of those who had to do a lot of screaming. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. And never, never, there are points when you have to, right? No? Well, my son, my son was quite a challenge. Um, he was very mischievous and loved to annoy the girls. And um, so for him, well, I used to just use my mom and I used to say, listen, I'm going to go to school and I'm not going to come back and pick you up. 
but that um works? but 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 for the most part but for the most part no i i i must tell god thanks i was one of the lucky ones okay that's awesome that's no when awesome. i no when i see this is this is what i cannot agree this is what i cannot agree with though um nowadays kids feel like they have equal rights and they must have an opinion well yeah. That's the part equal I can, rights. That's when the you part say I equal can't rights, you mean where, equal um, to you mean equal to the parent, right? Right. Yeah. Equal rights to the parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that part I cannot get used to because even though some of the parents some foolishness what I'm used to really um kill kids for, but and some of them annoy, but um the kids the nowadays kids. They need to know that most of the time, not all, but most of the time, the parents are usually right. Yeah, they they want to, they act like they, that we born today. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'm yes. like, this is what I said today. Well, since you, since I just born and you born a long time. Yeah. Like I would say, yes, 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 when yes. I was interview, he was going on his first interview. I said, the beach, what are you going to wear? Oh, I'm gonna wear jeans and a, you don't wear jeans and a t-shirt, mommy. It's just jeans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm like Dimitri. When mm -hmm. you're going on an interview, you have to dress different. You have to dress first impressions last. Well, mommy, it's just a pair of jeans. What are you gonna? Uh, I, I, so hear me. I said since you've been on numerous jobs, interviews, and you've gotten your jobs, wear what you want to wear. Don't go act nothing. Call your brother. Mm -hmm. Call his brother. Yeah. No, it's true. That that's the stand we really. That's the stand we really have to take. That's the stand we really have to take. So he but you know what happened, and I'm and I'm feeling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he called his brother. The, the thing is, cause like Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can hear. Yeah. No. No. I, what 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 happened? Some really. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, you're hearing me. No, I'm saying sometimes you have to really be careful because you know what? Some of the things that we, like me, I use on my kids in terms of like to eat vegetable and to drink water and whatever, it come back to bite me because, because of the way I drill it in them and them go extreme right now. Yep, and they love to put, but you said. So, you know, that it, it, it depends. Ah. Yes, it's true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Look here, people don't drink soda. You're not supposed to drink the soda. You must just drink water and you're not right. So now if them even see me take up a bottle, look like soda. It's like Ooh. I am committing a crime. Yeah, that's part of the challenge I have yeah. with my so kid we have to, as well. So we just be careful what we wish for. Yeah, it, it's, it, that's the same right, thing. Right, Every day right. I'm like, oh, I have to make sure I don't say this. I have to make sure I don't do this because I've told her mm -hmm. not to do this. So I can't do it. So I have to live by every single rule that I've said. Yes. <laughs> because yeah, no, then no, they go true. well. No, they come, they come back said. to me with it. Yeah, they come back to me with it where um, as a kid, it was unheard of for my kids to drink soda. Soda was never. And if they go anywhere and anybody even trying to give them, if I'm not there, they feel like they're going to get in trouble. So they're not going to drink it. They can't give my kids them soda. And now me now, we want one soda and say, listen, man, we just want to kill the taste in my mouth, whatever. Mommy, mommy you used to make it sound like it was poison and you're drinking it now. So I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we have to be careful of the things. But but, oh, yeah. but the, the kids, them, some of the kids these days need some of the old school raising of kids. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, whole, the whole thing. Some of them do, but unfortunately, because time has changed, um, you know, it's very different today yeah. than it was when we were growing up because, you know, back then mm -hmm. our parents would mm -hmm. give us a whooping, you know, and, you know, they go and they grab the belt or something and it's like, whoa, watch out now. Now they're like, yeah, okay, it doesn't matter. And they, they'll repeat the same thing. No, they'll see you, you with know? the see you with mm -hmm. the and be like, okay, where she go with that? Like, okay. And and even if even if they you know they deal with it and they adjust, yeah. so it doesn't have the effect that you thought it was gonna that it had on us when we were growing up. It doesn't have that effect. I know I was terrified. No, it's true. You know? It's true. 
Man, my mm-hmm. mother said she go beat me stop. Fr- I man, I tremble. Me cry. You're thinking about that all day in school oh, and everything. Not cry. Yep. I, I didn't know yep. what you cried for. What you cried for? What do you mean? What I cried for? And let me get something for cry from. Let me get something for cry for. Yeah. Don't cry. Oh, you don't feel nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, like lady, I'm confused. What do you want me to cry or don't cry? Right? These kids. They just stare at you like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no, they yeah. My kids' devices. And yeah, they yeah, just find yeah, yeah, other yeah, clever yeah. ways. But the thing is, I took away the device and it was like, like right now, my kid has lost her main device that she couldn't live without for almost a month now. And it's like, ah, oh, that's no big deal. It's like, really? Yeah, it, it, uh, listen, that is what makes me just want to. I'm making you feel like that punishment not worth it. Yes, yeah. it's not. It's like, I, what? Come again, try something else. Try like, something else. So every day it's like, oh, what else can I try? Or what else can I do? Because it's like nothing works. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. I'm the, the, bigger, the biggest thing, mm-hmm, the biggest thing I did to my daughter, the, the my oldest daughter was when she went to college, she wanted to pierce our navel. And I said, no, pierce the navel for what? No navel, no tattoo. No piercing on the navel and no tattoo. And she, she went behind my back and um, pierced her navel. And I never know until one year after I know, I know my son knew, but she thought I knew. So we were having a conversation and she said, and she said, she asked her, she, she was asking my daughter right in front of me, if our, our, the, the ring in our navel, the earring in our navel is still there. And I said, what earring in navel is still there? And I said, lift up your clothes and show me. And when she showed me, um, and I saw, I was like, don't I tell you, never did before your neighbor. I said, well, since I was a woman, you were, you're going to make your own care payment, you're going to pay your own insurance. And that was what I did to her. And she learned that lesson. I learned it the other, every time she talked about it. Because I was there paying her car insurance and paying her car payment. And so I said, like, oh, yeah, woman, now you go look work and pay your, your car payment and pay your insurance. Eventually, I made a take back over the insurance. But we make her, because her car payment was low still, like $160. But we make her pay our copy so that no sure. I say, listen, when your mother tell you something, you, you must should listen. listen. Right. No, so listen. so me, me, me drastic like that. Uh-uh. They know everything. So as I said, since you know everything, y'all don't need me around. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's, it's true. So what you ladies doing for Thanksgiving? Nothing. Um, everybody's staying at every. I, I got invited to a few um part. I mean Thanksgiving dinner, but I'm not really feeling going to anybody's house right now and um you know what's so- and socialize. So I might end up staying. I I saw on the news today. Huh? I saw on the news today this morning mm-hmm. talking about um Thanksgiving dinners. How that is going to spike the COVID. And you know, a lot of people are saying that yep. you know they want this family thing, but you know it's best if you stay home and all of that. So yep. I don't know. So, how- so let me tell you, ladies, this I am located in the New York, New Jersey area, and in our area right now, the COVID has spiked, honey. It is it is yep. really yeah, it's going the- higher and higher and higher every day. And at this point right now, New York schools are closing back down. Yeah. So your your um your signal is a little bit coming in a little bit bad right now, unfortunately. Um it's in and out, in and out. But yeah, but I think I heard what you said in the New York schools right now. Um, they're thinking of closing down and all of that. Right now, we I'm have closing restrictions. Down. Yeah, they, they, back. I, saw, I just saw it on the news. Yeah. They said it. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. yeah. and in New Jersey, uh, we're, yeah, um, we're the numbers are skyrocketing we're have a again. again. So we're back to, mm-hmm. to all of that again, like we were in the beginning. And now it's almost like we're back to rationing. They're rationing the foods at the supermarket and stuff like that because people are, they're back to hoarding. So we're right back in the thick of what was happening before people. So, and it's, wow, so it's because, wow, wow. it's because a lot of people did not listen. They got a little too relaxed. COVID did not go anywhere. It's still here. It's true. But it's everyone true, yeah. thought that it left and everybody just went out and started to do stuff. And here we are again. So 
Yeah. Real quick. So with that said, we want, we're like 15 minutes before the show ends and we really need to get your segment in. Yeah, so I'm going to jump into the voiceover segment right now. And just everybody, as you all know, um, my name is Carol Tanya, and I am the founder of Lights Action Voiceover. So really, I am a voiceover artist as well. <laughs> it's my other job. And Ooh, um, yeah, so I specialize in um, like doing documentaries, doing narrations, e-learning, commercials mm. is one, audiobooks. And one of the things that I always talk about for all of our small business owners and stuff, um, even on here as well, is uh, something as simple as a professional sounding voicemail. And a lot of times we overlook that for our business. And I know several business owners you call and they don't really think about using voicemail as a selling point for your business, oh, which it can it really help. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are so many different types of voiceover that I've always talked about. Like I said, I mentioned the documentary, the e-learnings, um, the commercials, the radio. And since we are in radio ourselves, um, I have done some radio spots, one for Miss Reese right here on her other radio show as well. And for another radio morning show um, there in Florida as well. So, um, so that's another form of voiceover. Now, what I want to talk about, so for all of you small business owners, you, you make clothing and shoes and your fabulous earrings and everything that you're hustling right now to do. Think about voicemail, professional voicemail as a selling point for what you're doing or a product demo. Maybe you want to describe your products and talk about what I are need the that. fantastic. I need that. Okay. Well, you know, as Reese would laugh and say, here I am again, voiceover can help your business. But a lot of times we don't think about that. I you know, know. We, we, we forget, you know, we watch TV and we see a commercial on TV and it's just like. Ah, we watch it and it goes by and we don't really think about it or we don't know anybody who's actually into voiceover so we don't think about it so sue you can reach out to me we can chat some more about your business okay, and how yeah. voiceover can help uh-oh your signal is really we're not even no hearing i know you i was right trying to do i'm launching a, um a course and i wanted the voiceover Huh? Okay, we're Nothing hearing you now up? again. Yeah, we lost you for a minute. Are you hearing me? We're hearing you now. Yeah, yeah. What I'm okay. What I'm what I'm saying is I'm in the process of launching this new course that I'm um I'm, I'm doing. I'm offering intimate help, and so I was looking on Fiverr to find somebody to do a recording. So yes, I definitely need to talk to you. Look no further, because there you have Miss Carol. <laughs> from lights action voiceover <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. yep, 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 yes, yep. definitely need, yeah. so reach out to me at lights action voiceover at gmail.com okay yeah, lights action voiceover at gmail.com okay yeah and you can um find some samples on uh my okay. youtube you channel on facebook oh you're not facebook. on facebook y Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram. Yes, ma'am. All right. And I just gave okay. you my email address. So check out the okay. sample and, um, you know, reach out to me and we can chat. Okay. I definitely will. I definitely will because um, I need it. I was actually on Fiverr last night trying to find someone. Oh, okay. So you just got your personal Fiverr right here. <laughs> okay. I, um, I will. I will. And, and so and with that... Everybody just heard live that Carol just scored a deal. Uh, that's right. You you all see, see? shameless, sh shameless, right, Reese? So you all heard live right now my live pitch that I just yep. gave to a potential client, and I just got a client live on the radio. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yes. Because I, I mean, I, I'm I'm excited about what I'm doing, so I really want to do it. And then I, I'm hoping that I'll be able to one probably one of these segments be able to come on and 
give a little um basic info on on what it is but okay. yeah um I'm, I'm pushing out for an invitation to be able to introduce it here. Well, we can chat about that. So depending on what it is that you're talking about, we, we can definitely chat about that, Sue. No worries. Okay. All right. Well, I'll reach out. I'll definitely reach yeah. out to you and then we can um, take it from there. Okay. Absolutely, my dear. So with that, Reese, if you could play and Sue, you can listen to a little piece of what I'm going to play right now. The link is in the email, Reese. So basically, I'm playing an excerpt from what we talked about with our special guests today, uh, when we talked about postpartum depression, is completely coincidental that I did an audiobook excerpt on oh. postpartum depression, you know, from a, a, another client who had asked me to do this piece. They wrote their um, authors and they wrote a narrative on analyzing women's mental health and the causes wow. of mental health issue and issues in women. And um, it's on their website. However, you know, everybody, they wanted it to be in audio as well as um, in written form because most people are in their cars. They're busy today. Right, um, right, you know, right, right. They like to hear audio. So I did the audio for their written piece that they did an analysis on the very, very popular book on women's health, which is postpartum depression. The book is called Behind the Yellow Wallpaper, very popular book. And it is specifically talking about women's mental health. Now, my excerpt is very short. Um, the piece that I did was maybe about 16 minutes long. We're not going to play all of that here, but I have about three minutes of it right now that I want to play for the listeners just to give you an idea because it syncs up with what we talked about today, postpartum depression. And it's the, the Behind wow. the Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. So here we go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you seeing the screen? No. Yes. It's um, it's searching. It says he has started screen sharing, but it hasn't come up as yet. Searching for it. Okay. I am um, okay. We're seeing your screen right now. Not come. It's it's still it's still cooking. It's still cooking. <laughs> Apparently, we're having some slow internet issues today. Um, you guys, we know that you all always stick with us, but it's taking a while to um start up today, unfortunately. But um, yeah. while that is while that is loading, um, you guys are always welcome. It is on the Lights Action Voiceover YouTube page. So as usual, we usually play our videos from the YouTube page to make it very very easy, and we make sure that everyone is able to go out and see what we're talking about. So in case you're wondering, and in case we're having difficulty showing it to you, to you today, like we normally do. Um, just go on out to the YouTube page, Lights Action Voiceover, and you'll see what um, what we're talking about out there. And I think you're you're gonna be able to pull it up, Reese. It YouTube is okay. It says YouTube is busy. <laughs> Did it say? Uh, listen, right now I'm busy. I don't have time for you. Is that what YouTube is? Is telling you, Reese? I'm busy right now. Don't have time for you today. Lady. It's it's um yeah, it's very, very slow today. And that's that's something with the that's the internet connection, unfortunately. Don't know why that is happening. But like I said, for everybody else, while Reese's um connection decides on what it wants to do. You guys who have your own internet connection, your own Wi-Fi connection or whatever, go on out to YouTube and look up Lights Action VoiceOver yeah, and you will see, time. yeah, your YouTube is just not starting up right now, but um, yeah, we can't keep it. Response. I don't 
don't know. Yeah. We've been... uh, yeah, we've been doing this. And unfortunately, your YouTube does not seem to want to cooperate today. So we can't show everybody what we're talking about. But I guarantee you, you would like it. And the funny thing is, like I said, it's right in line with what we talked about today. Thank and it's an analysis of the yellow wallpaper. Um, but my piece is really just an excerpt of it. It's really only about three minutes of that, um, analyzing the book and, uh, you know, of women and mental health. And the fact that years ago, we're talking years ago, you know, maybe like a hundred years or a little over a hundred years, they didn't understand anything about postpartum depression. So when a woman was having difficulty with childbirth or issues with childbirth, um, they just assumed that she was being fussy or she was having, or if she had anxiety or depression issues, that she was just, Behind it's an issue, they, they pass it off. Paper, a lot of women and- I think we are- It's finally played. starting up. It was playing and- And then something happened. <laughs> All right, let's go. Here we go. Mental health by Shalira Barksdale, a Spork exclusive article behind the yellow wallpaper, a look at women and mental health by Shalira Barksdale, a Spork exclusive article narrated by Tanya from Lights Action Voiceover. Mental illness has played a role in the lives of millions of women long before official diagnoses were named. Bouts with depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and many other illnesses have been depicted in both print and film. Women writers and poets have written in beautiful honesty about the plight of mental illness. Writers such as Sylvia Plath, Virginia Woolf, Anne Sexton, J.K. Rowling, and Lena Dunham have all written in a biographical manner or through characters and creatures about succumbing to illness and the feelings left thereafter. On screen, films such as Single White Female, Girl Interrupted, Grey Garden, Black Swan, and Silver Linings Playbook showcase the very real feelings of loneliness and anxiety associated with mental illness. Today's recognition of mental illness in women is a far cry from the response women have received over the past hundred plus years. One prime example of the acknowledgement of mental illness in women can be found in Charlotte Perkins Gilman's short story, The Yellow Wallpaper. Although this piece of literary finesse was written 124 years ago, it so boldly addresses the oppression of women, both mentally and professionally. The story follows closely as a woman spirals into what is seemingly a pit of psychosis. The woman, after giving birth, battles what we know as postpartum depression. Given the time, 1892, this woman's symptoms were simply diagnosed as a slight hysterical tendency. The physician's cure for this slight hysterical tendency was rest, fresh air, and absolutely no work or social gatherings. It is clear as the story progresses what harm this isolation does to the main character. By the end of the story, the woman does not want to leave the room that has been listed for her rest and envisions herself as a part of the room's wallpaper, the only in her secluded world. The yellow wallpaper, in my opinion, gave insight into what life was like for women during this time period, with women often depicted as weak and mentally fragile. The cure for bouts of depression was isolation and rest, which in turn often caused more harm than good. 
Okay, you can hit cancel, hit cancel. That's it, hit cancel. All right. <laughs> so like I said, that was three minutes of the narration for the summary of the Behind the Yellow Wallpaper book. What did you think? Yeah, wow. You know, Powerful. Always, you know that I'm always amazed when I hear your voice. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. But I, I really liked it. And because we talked about postpartum depression today, it was so coincidental that I had this piece that I had done for a client um, summarizing the postpartum depression issue in women. It was just passed off back then as, yeah, you know. What of that, the movie Virginia Woolf? Mm -hmm. Where she was schizo. Mm hmm so. And the whole idea behind the wallpaper is that they locked her in this room with the yellow wallpaper. And eventually she started imagining herself as being a part of the, the wallpaper. But it's not because the, the poor woman was crazy. You know, this was a part of postpartum depression. And if you do that and, and you have to be faced with isolation this entire time, that's what will manifest itself. The crazy part of you. So yeah, that's a part of voiceover as well, which is narration, which is audiobook, um, different forms of voiceover. So there you have it, people. You know, every week I like to introduce you guys to a different form of voiceover. No. So, um, good. Um, Sue, you have an idea of what Carol sounds like. Sorry, I, I didn't hear that. No, I'm saying you have an idea of what Carol's work is. You just heard it. Wait, did you, you listen to it, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, that was Carol's work. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there's tons more on, like I said, on the YouTube channel. So feel free, check it out. I um, will. There are different types. All right. So with that, we are wrapping it up today, people. It was a full, it was a good show today. Love the topic, love our guests. Love Miss Sue Lee for joining us, you know. And and anytime I'm happy I came on. I'm happy I came on, even though it was the last part, but I'm happy I came on. And as yes. I say, I'm looking I'm looking forward to be one of your um thing that you talk about the same the same this well the ebook and the whole thing of it. So I guess some um some sometime in the near future, hopefully. And please yes, uh, even if you can't join us online, I mean watching us on Zoom or Join us on our, um, we are on myturnradio.net. Okay. And okay. Right. So you can still listen to us, even if you can't join us. We are a radio station. So for everybody else, oh, okay. you join us. Okay. Okay. Yeah, still okay. listen to us, you know, check us out. And we are on YouTube. I will. I will. And I'm going to, I just say, I'm going to look on the, um, the YouTube for uh, that. And then I'll reach out to you. Because as I say, I was looking on Fiverr. So I'll reach out to you. I like, you know, working with people that I know. Good. All right, everybody. Thank you so all right, much. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. And Reese, with that, we have come to the end of another show oh. here that we call Let's Connect. We had an amazing show. Yes, we sure do connect. Major, major thanks today to our special guests. We had Birdie, who was on um, and shared with us the um, postpartum depression. Birdie is from PSI, Postpartum Services International, Postpartum Support International. Let me get it right, because uh, Birdie was wonderful. Birdie Gunyan Meyer um, from Postpartum Support International, PSI. Go online um, and look at www.postpartum.net. Okay, for postpartum support services, and you can find an array of everything that's there, as well as we had our counselor today for postpartum services, um, counseling services for women, not just postpartum, but counseling services for women, um, Leslie Herold, Herold, that's how she pronounces it, Leslie Herold, and we will put the link to Leslie's page as well for everybody who's listening. 
It is Leslie Harold, the, the Leslie T. Harold, H E R H O L D L C S W dot com for counseling services. Okay. Hello. 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 Okay. Is anybody there? Hello. Is this thing working? Hello. 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 Is this thing working? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Why is your so far away? <laughs> oh oh. All right, so let's wrap up for our listeners because we are way over time right now. Yes, I was waiting for you guys. My client's cooling Aww. off of her own treatment. So I told her, let me go really quick and do the wrap up for you guys. Let's get going. That's let's so sweet. Well, we'll All right, so thank you, everybody. This you is you Let's Connect. Know. Come back next week, everybody. Every Wednesday, we're here from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We love you. We will see you next week. Again, same time, same place. And as you know, this is Let's Connect, where you find more compassion, more empathy, and less judgment. We got it. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.